It's the headline glamour matchup of the college football bowl season, featuring Texas and Notre Dame, with the Heisman Trophy winner, the Outland Trophy winner, the Walter Cab Trophy winner, the Coach of the Year, and the possible national championship at Dallas, Texas, in a stadium that has been sold out for months, the 1978 Cotton Bowl. And now, let's meet the starting lineups for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The left tackle, number 73, Tim Foley. The left guard, number 66, Ted Horansky. At center, number 56, Dave Hoffman. At right guard, number 65, Ernie Hughes. At right tackle, number 71, Steve McDaniels. At tight end, number 81, All-American Ken McAfee. The split end, number 82, Chris Haynes. The flanker, number 34, David Weimer. At running back, number 32, Vegas Ferguson. At fullback, number 30, Jerome Heavens. At quarterback, number three, Joe Montana. Some other members of the Fighting Irish. At defensive end, defensive co-captain, All-American number 89, Ross Browner. The other defensive co-captain, defensive end number 94, Willie Fry. The offensive co-captains, fullback, number 40, Terry Urich. The other offensive co-captain, number 14, Steve Orsini. The head coach of the Fighting Irish, Dan Devine. And the rest of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame.
meet the offensive unit of the Longhorns of Texas. The left tackle, number 79, George James. At left guard, number 73, Rick Ingraham. At center, number 58, Wes Hubert. The right guard, number 67, Jim Yarbrough. The right tackle, number 74, David Studdard. At tight end, number 82, Gil Harris. The split end, number two, Alfred Jackson. At flanker back, number 26, Johnny Lamb Jones. At running back, number 25, Johnny Ham Jones. At fullback, number 20, the Heisman Award winner, Earl Campbell. The quarterback, number six, Randy McEachin. The defensive co-captain, number 77, Brad Shearer, the Outland Award winner. <laughs> defensive co-captain, linebacker, number 38, Morgan Copeland. <laughs> defensive back, number 27, Johnny Johnson. The kicker for the Longhorns, number 15, Russell Erksleben. And the head coach of the Texas Longhorns, Freddie Akers. The Longhorns of the University of Texas. Everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning and Paul Alexander here in the booth at the Cotton Bowl. We have a stadium full of excitement. Temperatures 35 degrees. It's clear and it's sunny. The Texas Longhorns know that if they can win today, they win the national championship. The Notre Damers know that if they win, they'll have a possibility of winning the national championship in the scramble of the polls that would follow. So to find out about Notre Dame, let's check in now with Paul Horning. Boy, Lindsey, it sure is electric. This whole Cotton Bowl has just erupted. For Notre Dame, the whole key to the ball game is try to control the quickness of Texas. Texas is a much quicker football team. On offense, quarterback Joe Montana will undoubtedly go to his All-American tight end, big Ken McAfee. There he is from Brockton, Massachusetts. And Lindsey even looks a little like Rocky Marciano, doesn't he? Six foot five and a half, 255 pounds, a surefire number one draft choice. He will be double covered all day long by the Texas defense. And uh, as far as the defense for Notre Dame is concerned, another, another guy who will receive double coverage is number 89, Ross Browner, a consensus two-time All-American, and he's got the job at defensive left end to try to stop Earl Campbell, and nobody has done it yet. Fellow who knows about the Longhorns is Paul Alexander. 
He is the host of Coach Fred Aker's Weekly Television Show about the Longhorns, Paul. Well, Lindsay, a popular song around Austin right now might be What a Difference a Year Makes. You know the story. Last year, this ball club was 5-5-1 five, five, and one, and also ran in the Southwest Conference, and now they're playing for the national championship. Certainly, Coach Fred Akers has had a lot to do with it, but two guys in particular need to be pointed out to you. First of all, you know this guy, the Heisman Trophy winner, number 20, Earl Campbell. He's gained 1,744 yards this year. That's 6.5 every time he touches the ball. Defensively, the Outland Trophy winner, number 77, Brad Shear. His coaches say he is the finest defensive lineman Texas has ever produced. And when you talk about guys like Scott Appleton and Tommy Nobis, etc., that is high praise indeed. This is going to be fun. Texas and Notre Dame in the 1978 Cotton Bowl. Now let's take a look at the field. Following the custom of the Southwest Conference, the Cotton Bowl Classic will be opened by a prayer followed by the national anthem, sung by the Crusader Choir from the Highland Park Presbyterian Church of Dallas, Roger McMurrin, director. They will be accompanied by the Monahans Texas High School Band, Dan Gibbs, director. The invocation will be given by the Reverend Tom J. Norton, S.J., president of Jesuit College Preparatory of Dallas. Please rise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you who have created all things and continue to sustain them by your loving kindness, we ask your blessing on all of us. Those of us gathered here in Dallas and all the members of the viewing, viewing and listening audiences, we thank you for the many blessings you have showered upon this great land of ours, and we ask your divine assistance in solving the problems that face us at home and throughout the world. May good sportsmanship prevail among all of us this afternoon and grant that the players may be safe from bodily injury. May peace, justice, and love prevail among all men during this holy season and throughout the months of the new year. We pray that you grant these and all our requests in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is one with you in the Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Observations. Let's go down to Jack Whitaker. Thank you, Lindsay. Yesterday we saw professional football in their championship games, and we saw them do it with the expertise to which we're accustomed because they're the very best in the world at what they do. Today we're going to see the very talented amateurs of football in what might be a truly championship game. You're going to hear the difference between yesterday and today in the color, the excitement, the intensity, and the noise. There's going to be an awful lot of go Irish and hook'em horns, and eyes of Texas are upon you, and shake down the thunder from the sky. Both clubs, of course, think they can win. The Irish have been penned up in a motel in Dallas since the 23rd of December. They're mean and ornery and ready to tear everybody apart. Texas supporters love to point out the fact that Pope Paul this Christmas was seen giving his Christmas blessing in the following manner. At any rate, we expect a very exciting and wonderful football game here today 
at the end of which we could have a true national collegiate champion. Unless, of course, Notre Dame wins, in which case they'll give the title to Ole Miss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack Whitaker. The captains are at the center of the field. Vance Carlson will be the referee. The captains are Earl Campbell and George James. Like Let's to listen to Vance Carlson. Carlson. Gate Officials Association, the work this Cotton Ball Game Classic of 1978. I want to introduce my fellow officials. This is the back judge, Artie Paul. Kent Houck, who's your line judge. Phil Leonard, who's your umpire. Bill Blackburn, the linesman. And John Schroeder, who's the field judge. Okay, we'll allow Notre Dame, the visiting team, and uh, as I have it here, coach or coaches requested that Captain Browner call the toss. Is that right? Want it understood? If I drop it, I'll throw it up again. This being heads and this being tails. All right, call it in the air, please. All right, he called tails, if you understand that, Texas, and it's heads. You may kick or receive or defend either goal. It's heads. It's heads, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, tails. My son, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, you'll receive. Okay, okay, round this way. I'm sorry about that, man. All right, uh, Texas wins the <laughs> Texas won the toss, I think. <laughs> and, and Notre Dame will kick off. Texas will receive. There are the officials. They are from the Big Eight Conference. Vance Carlson, the referee whom you heard. The captains you saw for Texas were Campbell, James Copeland, and Shearer. For Notre Dame, Yurik Orsini, Browner, and Fry. They've gone back for their final huddles. How about a final Longhorn comment, Paul uh, Alexander? Yeah, I was talking with Longhorn offensive coordinator Bobby Warmack this morning on the phone. And uh, if you think Texas is a grinded out football team, three yards and a mouthful of nylon, you may be in for a surprise. They expect to throw up to 20 times today. In fact, he indicated that what they would like to do is go deep to Olympic sprinter Johnny Lamb Jones, preferably on the first series. If they throw 20 times, they'll have to bury athletic director Darrell Royal. Paul Horning, what about a final Notre well, Dame I'm coming? You, I'm looking to that key right away, uh, as Paul said, and the coaches say they're going to try to go to Lamb Jones in the first series of play, so that's very, very important. Lamb Jones, of course, is the world's fastest football player. He can fly, and if they uh, stick to that uh, play-action pass, Lamb Jones will have man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. We might see the bomb right in the first three plays. Dave Reeve will kick it off. He is from Bloomington, Indiana. Dropping back, you see Jenkins number two dropping back, along with Lamb Jones, the man of whom Paul Horning just spoke. He recently ran uh, 100 meters at 9.85. Was an Olympic sprinter on the relay team, of course. Lamb Jones, and he can fly, and the Texas Longhorns make the most of him. He's talking to Jackson. Alfred Jackson, his teammate, and there is Reeve, and the Cotton Bowl game will be underway in just a moment. We are awaiting the whistle of Carlson, a referee that will start Reeve forward. And here he comes. The ball is in the air. Lamb Jones moves up, and he has it at the five. Lamb Jones to the 10. Hands it off on a reverse. They bring it back around to the 11-yard line. It was Randy Harrison who made the tackle. Reverse play given off to Johnson. He is the safety man, the punt returner, Johnny Johnson, who also can fly. The Longhorns have it first and 10 at their own 11-yard line. Well, they were trying to surprise the Notre Dame special teams right away. Texas ran a lot of reverses on kickoffs last year, but to my knowledge, that's the first time they've tried it this season. It backfired, but at least you know they're bringing it to them. Cinderella quarterback McEachern, bring, McEachern brings them up. Split backs off the beard. McEachern handing it off to Earl Campbell. Who else? And Earl gets up to the 14-yard line for three. It'll be second and seven. Jeff Weston in to make the tackle for Notre Dame. There's the Notre Dame defense. Browner, Dyke, Golick, Calhoun, and Fry. Linebackers, Heim, Crowder, and Becker. And the deep backs, Bradley Bergmeier on the corners, Jim Browner, and Restiker deep. Second down play coming. Texas will both run the veer and the eye formation with Campbell being the deep back. They're in the eye formation now. This is Campbell. Got just about to the 15-yard line, and that was all. Bob Golick was in there to make the tackle. 
Lindsay, Texas may have to open it up. There is a little bit of a physical mismatch up front. Notre Dame much bigger than Texas. So uh, maybe pounding away is not going to get it. Well, I mentioned at the top of the show, Paul, that uh, Texas is quicker. No question about that. Now, our, the average offensive line for Texas average is about 232, and the average defense for the Irish will go about 245. Third down and five yards to go for Texas. And McEachie and throws, and it is complete to his tight end. It was taken by Gil Harris. Gil Harris took it to tight end. Across the 35. Here it is, play action off the beer. Holds the linebackers with the fake. And McKeesha was going to number 82. Gil Harris is tight end all the way. Stopped by Joe Resto. Old Gil's a sophomore from Longview. He's not really renowned as a receiver. He's kind of small for a tight end. He's only caught eight passes this year. But he's a good clutch receiver, as you see there. First down and 10 yards to go, and the ball's across the 35-yard line. They're in the slot right. Leave it on the ground again to Campbell, and Earl Campbell, the Heisman winner, goes to the 45-yard line. I tell you, he runs like a truck inside and like a thoroughbred outside. He's got it all. Straight handoff off the left side behind good blocking. Rick Ingram and George James on the left side. And you see Campbell doing what he can do best. He slides outside and he's tough to bring down. Super blocked by Ingram, wasn't it? Uh, as a matter of fact, he's had a knee injury all year long, Paul. And coaches wanted him to sit out this year as a red shirt, but he decided, no way I'm missing this. Second down and a yard to go at the 45-yard line. That's McEachin. Going to throw it. And going long to Jackson, Bergmeier covering, incomplete. And simply an incompletion, that's the luxury now, and so now it's still third and one at the 45. That's the matchup I think Texas is looking for. Ted Bergmeier, not as quick as both the flankers. Here it is, play action, he fake it to Earl Campbell. Now they've got a matchup of Alfred Jackson against Ted Bergmeier, and McEachern just comes up a little bit short. Good job of coverage that time by Bergmeier. The Texas coaches say they have all the respect in the world for that guy. Third down and a yard to go, and it's at the 45-yard line. They've got Lamb Jones far to the right side. There's a pitch, and it's loose. It was for Campbell, and the scramble is on, and Notre Dame has recovered at the 31-yard line. Ross Browner on the football. Ross Browner. And he causes a bad pitch. Watch the quickness of Ross Browner on the outside. Now he got the outside position, caused the bad pitch by McKeacher, and he goes in and gets the football. All-American Ross Browner doing his thing. Is that guy quick? Look how fast he forced that pitch. First down and 10 for Notre Dame. Outside the 31-yard line, Joe Montana brings him up. Wide receivers left and right. Only Heavens is a running back. That's Waymer across in motion. That's Vegas Ferguson, the tailback. Vegas Ferguson to the 30, picked up a yard. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. The Texas defense stacked him up at the 30. There's the Texas offensive line, uh, the Notre Dame offensive line, Foley, Horansky, Huffman, Hughes, and McDaniels. Montana, Ferguson, and Heavens in the backfield. Receivers, Haynes, McAfee, and Waymer. At the 30-yard line. Second down and nine yards to go. Evans and Ferguson. Montana has the ball, and he's going long. He's open. Incomplete down the left sideline. Oh, he was there. They were trying to cover him one-on-one -on -one with Derek Hatchett. Derek's got 9-4 speed himself, but uh, had a step. It Doman, the intended receiver. That's what I was going to say, Lindsey. Tom Doman, there's your defensive line for Texas, and it's a good one. Very, very quick. Bones, Shearer, McMich McMichael, and Campbell. Tim Campbell is the brother of Earl Campbell. Copeland, Martinoni, and Sunline are the linebackers. Hatchet, Blackwood, Johnson, Churchman are the deep men. Montana dropping back. Incomplete. He was trying to hit hands on the crossing pattern. It was in and out of the hands of Johnny Johnson. That will bring on the punting unit now for Notre Dame. Well, on offense, Notre Dame is going to be much bigger. That is where they stack up a lot larger than Texas, but Texas defense is much quicker. Montana is limping off. On the far side, you see Montana leaving, and he is limping off. The quarterback, Dave Reeve, the field goal man, is in it. It is not the punting unit. It is Dave Reeve. His longest was 51 yards during the season. This will be a 47-yard attempt, and now we're going to get a timeout. We're getting a timeout. Notre Dame. 
So the Irish are spending a time out here in the first quarter. I think they want to talk it over, Lindsay, whether they want to go for the field goal. Dave Reeve is out there. You said as long as it's been 51 yards, he's got the wind at his back. And Montana is getting attention. There is no score. We're in the first quarter with 11 minutes, 41 seconds left to play. It was Montana's right knee. He's talking to Joe Yunus, who is from Dallas, Montana. And now it's going to be a 47-yard field goal attempt for Dave Reeve with Vestic holding, and this one is up, and it is good. 47-yard field goal for Dave Reeve. Notre Dame has taken a 3-0 lead with 11 minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Well, it looked like it was going to be just a little bit short, but it just creeped over the crossbar. He, he had a 12-mile-per-hour wind at his back. He didn't give back a lot of change on that one, did he? Not a great deal, just got it over the crossbar, and Dave Reeve goes to the sideline. Now comes back to tee the ball up at the 40-yard line. Notre Dame again will kick off to Texas. That is the Notre Dame band. We have all the hoopla, all the glamour, all the excitement of college football here at the Cotton Bowl on a beautiful afternoon. This game has been sold out since what? Since October. It's late October. The Cotton Bowl has been a sellout. Jackson has dropped back with Lamb Jones to receive it once again for Texas. Dave Reeve will put it up. And it's end over end. Good Lamb pick. Jones, two yards deep in the end zone, will not run it out. It's a touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Well, of course, Super Bowl 12 will be coming up on Sunday, January 15th, and it's on CBS. What a matchup, Lindsay. The Denver Broncos, the Cinderella team of professional football. What a job Red Miller has done against the very great football team, the Dallas Cowboys. Can Craig Martin come back and haunt his old teammates? And, of course, the game will be on at 6 p.m. Eastern time, preceded by an hour-and-a-half version of the NFL today, all on CBS on January 15th. Now, Texas has the ball. Earl Carmel has carried three times for 14 yards, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. McEachern is the quarterback. And it is Jones. Oh, Ham Jones carrying. Ham Jones to the 50. Ham Jones goes out of bounds. At the 40-yard line, first and 10, Ed Bergmeyer ran him out. The quickness of Texas, Polly. Super run by Johnny Ham Jones. He's less publicized than Texas two running backs, but this guy is good. He's a junior. He's been hurt his first two years. Watch how quick he gets in that hole and out again. He's averaged 5.3 yards a carry this year, and there you see why. He has got great, great speed once he breaks into the secondary, and there he gets a little help from his brother Alfred Jackson downfield blocking for him. Also got some help right at that safety point from Lamb Jones, who sprung him. 40 yards. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Texas and Notre Dame territory. McEachin, the quarterback, they're running it out of an eye formation. That's Campbell, the All-American Heisman Trophy winner. Picked up two to the 38 before Jeff Weston made the tackle. Perhaps you wonder why they call one of the Johnny Jones Ham Jones and one Lamb Jones. It is, of course, to distinguish them, but they got that out of the names of their hometowns. Johnny Ham is from Hamlin and Johnny Lamb is from Lampasas. So it's Johnny Lamb Jones and Johnny Ham Jones, and how do you like that? Second down and eight yards to go. Those guys are quite a pair off the field. They run around together, and they, they get a lot of mileage out of that Ham Brothers, uh, or rather, <laughs> Jones Brothers stuff. McEachin. Brings him up now. He's the man who came in after two quarterbacks were injured in the Oklahoma game. <laughs> Campbell. Earl Campbell to the 32-yard line. Ross Browner came to make the tackle. It'll be third and two at the 32. Uh, the best running back in Texas history. Darrell Royal told me when this kid was a freshman that he was the best he had at that time. He loves contact big. How big is he? They say he's 220. He's bigger than He's closer to 230 right now. He lost some weight at the beginning of the season. As, as many of you know, he missed almost half of last season because of some recurring leg problems. The team physicians determined that it might be that he was overweight, so he dropped a little weight this year, but he's still about 230. He picked up a few on the banquet circle. A crowd by play in there this time to Johnny Ham Jones, trying to pick up the first down. Now, it looks as though he did from here. They'll get him unstacked. Ken Dyke made the stop, and then they'll take a long look and give us the word. It's a first and 10 for Texas at the 29-yard line. I'm kind of surprised, Paul, we haven't seen Texas run the counter option yet, and that's a 
just a big part of their offense. It's always a big part, and I think it'll prob probably be even a bigger part today. They think that because Notre Dame plays play such a reaction-type defense, they can get them going one direction and then bring the counter back to the other side. Out of the eye formation, first and 10 at the 29. That's Earl Campbell. Moved it to the 27 for two. It'll be second out at eight yards to go. Bob Goley can to make the tackle. He's an All-American middle guard. 6'3", 244 pounder from Willowick, Ohio. Well, they're always ranked third in the nation this year against the rush on defense. They only average, uh, let the offense average about 90 yards a game rushing. So they've been very good against the rush, but they're going to have their hands full today. You're not about to push that Notre Dame defensive line around, though. They're just too big and talented. Second down and eight. As they run out of the split back veer here. And Jones again. Ham Jones to the 20-yard line. Becker along with Joe Restick in to make the stop. It'll be third and one. End zone shot here, and I think Notre Dame's defense is really key. Number 20. That might open it up inside for this play right here. Johnny Ham Jones. You see Browner out of the picture. He went with number 20, and that created the hole inside. Well, Ham's already got as many carries in the first quarter as he normally gets in an entire game. 51 yards and three carries for Ham Jones. Third and one, and this is Earl Campbell for first and 10. First and 10 for Texas. Just outside the Notre Dame 16-yard line. And Steve Heimkreider made the tackle for Notre Dame. Texas offensive line beginning to assert itself a little bit now. They, they're not the biggest guys in the world up front, but there's some kind of quick, and there is some experience there. Texas Longhorns are driving. Notre Dame's leading by three points. We have eight minutes, 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Earl Campbell rushed for 1,744 yards. He led the nation in rushing. He led the nation in scoring. He led the Longhorns for an undefeated season. He won the Heisman Trophy. Number 20, Earl Campbell. All world. Got it again. Got just to the 13-yard line. Picked up about three on the play, which would make it second and seven. Doug Becker, along with Willie Fry, made the stop. Texas Longhorns are in the Cotton Bowl for the 16th time. Under Darrell Royal, who coached them for 20 years, they won three national championships, won the Southwest Conference title 11 times. Darrell Royal retired at the end of last season. He's here today as the director of athletics for the University of Texas. They are sending Jackson far to the right side, number two. They are sending Jones far to the left side. That's Lamb Jones. Kitchen. Kitchen decides to run it, and he has dropped the 14-yard line. It was Willie Fry who got to him. And, Paul, look at what they were trying to do, just what we were talking about. Just hang it up to the corner and let Lamb Jones run to it, but Notre Dame wouldn't buy it. And McEachern, I think, made a good move back there. They had Lamb Jones double covered. Everybody was covered. He tried to pick it up on the ground. Third down and eight yards to go. They lost a yard. It's back to the 14-yard line. This time, they are sending Mike Lockett far to the right side. He and Johnny Jones, Johnny Lamb Jones, have been alternating. Harris is the tight end. Sack. Back at the 25-yard line by Jim Browner, the strong safety. Jim Browner got to him, number 33. He's the brother of Ross Browner. Notre Dame's defense would not go for the fake here. Passing situation. Here comes the safety blitz. That's Browner, the strong safety, coming up on the outside to sack McEachern. But keep well, in mind, Lindsay, they got what? Russell Erksleben coming in. Erksleben is in. It's going to be a 42-yard field goal attempt. He tied the NCAA record against Rice with a 67-yarder. He considers this a chip shot. It's Churchman in at a hole. Ricky Churchman. Erksleben puts it up. And it's good. Erksleben with the field goal. And the score is tied. They have traded field goals. Notre Dame three and Texas three. Six minutes, seven seconds left in the first quarter. When Notre Dame quarterback Joe Montana was hit on that first sequence, he suffered a possible hyperextension of his right knee. He will come back in to quarterback the Irish on this next series of downs, but Notre Dame is warming up. It's backup quarterback Rusty Lidge. Now let's go back up to Lindsay. All right, Don Cricky, it'll be Russell Erksleben who just kicked the field goal kicking off, and Notre Dame has dropped back deep. Steve Schmitz, along with Terry Urich, to receive it. Erksleben 
a fabulous character. He is an extrovert of sorts. He says that his quickness in getting the ball off can be attributed to coaching from his older sister. He kicks a knuckleball downfield, and it is Yurik off his chest. Yurik picks it up to 13, to the 15, to the 20, and he is stopped at the 23-yard line. It is Farmer downfield to make the tackle, so it is first and 10, Notre Dame at the 23. Return of 11 yards for Yurik, and Joe Montana does come out to quarterback the Irish. During the season in forward passing, he was 99 for 189, 52.4%, 11 touchdowns and eight interceptions. 11 plays on the drive, 80 yards, they kept the ball 518. Vegas Ferguson is carrying the football and he gets to the 25 for two, it'll be second and eight. Got a good pop by that linebacker, Morgan Copeland, left linebacker for Texas. Six foot, 205 pounds, and he'll stick it. Morgan Scott. <laughs> Pardon me, he's a scholar athlete and he's from Houston, Texas. He was. Recognized with the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame in December in New York. Five minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played. In the first quarter, and we're in a 3-3 tie. They've got Heavens in front of Vegas Ferguson in an eye formation. Notre Dame ran out of the eye for most of the year, went to it for the Army game and stayed in it. Tom Doman is in motion across. Rolling is Montana looking. Throws up field, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find his big tight end, I think. It was crossing. Hands had gone deep, and Churchman was covering. McAfee. An All-American candidate who won the Walter Cap Trophy. Texas in, Texas in man coverage in the secondary. They've got a lot of confidence in the athletic ability of the four guys they got back there. So it is third down and eight yards to go as Texas deploys the defense. Notre Dame alternates the wing backs. They've got Dave Waymer out in the wide left now. Dropping back. Montana throw it. Complete. Chris Haynes is up at the 45-yard line. Vance Haynes. Bedford made the stop. Vance Bedford was right there, but Haynes hooked up a deep little hook pattern. It's going to pick up 20 yards of first down for Notre Dame. Good pass protection. Only a four-man rush here for Texas. Montana, good setup. And he hits Haynes on the square out. Vance Bedford on the stop. First down, Notre Dame. Doman in a wide left. Haynes in a wide right. Vegas Ferguson evened up with Heavens. That's Evans carrying on a delay, and he gets across the 50 to the Texas 48-yard line before Johnny Johnson came up from his safety to make the stop. Lindsey, going into this ball game, Texas was a little bit concerned about their linebacker situation. Their regular middle linebacker, Lance Taylor, suffered a separated shoulder in the season finale against Texas A&M. So weak side linebacker Mark Martinoni has moved to the middle, and freshman Robin Sinline is now playing the weak side. Second down and three yards to go. Waymer's in motion across. Montana gives it to Vegas Ferguson. He's got the first down. It is first and 10 at the 44-yard line of Texas. Morgan Copeland from his linebacker spot made the tackle. Watch the guard pull here. There's 65. That's Ernie Hughes, another All-American. Hand off to Ferguson. He cuts back inside the block of the tackle. Tim Foley for the first down. It is spotted inside the 44-yard line. We have four minutes, 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Texas three, Notre Dame three. Montana dropping back to set up. He looks and he throws long and it's incomplete. Trying to hit Waymer. That is his wing back and it was hatchet downfield covering defensively. Dan Devine, head coach of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Second and 10 at the 44 yard line. It's a good thing uh, Coach Devine moved his team out of the hotel, don't you think, Lindsay? There was hundreds of cars, Texas fans, singing the eyes of Texas, blowing their arms. But Dan Devine moved his team 25 miles outside of Dallas last night for a good night's rest. He had taken to the monastery the night before, so they were not at the hotel where they had been. That's a Vegas Ferguson, and he stopped short of the 41-yard line. Morgan Copeland again coming in to assist on the tackle along with Henry Williams for Texas. You know, Notre Dame's two offensive backs don't get a lot of publicity, but Texas has all the respect in the world for them. They think they're both excellent athletes, and uh, Heavens in particular, they're very concerned about with his size and speed. It's going to be kind of tough to contain him. Third down and eight yards to go. Notre Dame at the Texas 41-yard line. Montana wants to put it up. Incomplete. That was Haynes over there on the sideline. It'll be fourth and eight at the 41-yard line. He threw that one away, Lance. Everybody, good away. coverage by the secondary of Texas. He threw it away. Joe Resty comes in to do the punting now. He is also a free safety. His father is the head coach at Harvard, and throughout his head 
His high school career, his father never saw him play. His father is here at the Cotton Bowl this afternoon. This is only the third time that his father has ever seen his son play. They asked me why he picked Notre Dame over Harvard. He didn't go there. He said, I didn't want to go to football factory. Restick has averaged 38.1. Johnny Johnson, one of the great punt returners in the nation, is back deep for Texas. Filing kick. Goes out of bounds. Let's see where it's going to be lined up. It's going to be on up the sideline at the eight-yard line. So Texas will start first and ten at the Texas eight. Good kick. We are in a 3-3 tie here on a beautiful afternoon in Dallas, Texas, and we have three minutes, 27 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's the Texas band, and what they're saying is go, horns, go. And the horns have the ball at their own eight-yard line. Campbell's carried eight times for 32 yards. Ham Jones three times for 51 yards. McEacher is the quarterback. Gives it to Earl Campbell, his Heisman Trophy-winning running back who moves it up to the 14-yard line. Picked up six on the play. It'll be second down and four yards to go. Ken Dyke from Maryville, Indiana, made the tackle for Notre Dame. Oh, they use a lot of straight handoffs in their attack with Campbell, don't they? Easy to understand. Ahead. Easy to understand when you've got a guy that's that big and that fast, he can just cut off the block and take it to him. Paul Alexander is here in our booth today. He is the sports director of our CBS affiliate in Austin. He does the coaches show with Fred Akers throughout the season. Paul Horning here with us as well, and that is Earl Campbell carrying. He moves up to the 20-yard line to pick up the first and 10 for the Longhorns of Texas. You'll notice that Texas will run a lot of the time back to the left side, the reason being they have two very experienced offensive linemen on that side, tackle George James and guard Rick Ingram, both of whom are seniors. In Cotton Bowl history, the host team has won 20 games. The visiting team has won 17 games. There have been four ties. Texas sends Jackson to the left side, Jones to the right side. That's Johnny Lamb. That's the handoff quick to Johnny Ham. He yep. got to the 22 for two. It'll be second and eight. They got burned a couple times with that little handoff to Ham Jones and the Notre Dame defense on the left side. Played that a little tighter. Notre Dame with a record of 10 and one. They lost to Ole Miss early in the season. Let's go defense! Let's go defense! Let's go defense! Notre Dame cheerleaders. Let's go defense! When Paul Horning was in school, they didn't have female cheerleaders. If they did, it was from St. Mary's across the road. That have still been there. <laughs> they would have been in trouble. Second down and eight yards to go. Rockets in motion across for Texas. Big pitch for Earl Campbell. Moved up just across the 22-yard line, but Steve Heimkreider was there to meet him from his linebacker spot. Oh, Heimkreider came a long way. Well, he did, and it was no gain, so it'll be third and eight. You know, Texas uses Campbell just like the Chicago Bears use Walter Payton. Even though maybe Payton would not break a play, they just keep giving the ball to him because they know the law of averages, he's going to break one. And that's exactly what Texas will do with Earl Campbell. They'll keep giving the football. He'll run it 25, 30 times average. Earl Campbell, one of 11 children reared by a widowed mother. And there's a pass out of the flat on the screen. It's taken by Ham Jones. And Ham Fumble. Jones fumbled the football, and Notre Dame recovered it. Oh, he, at the 27-yard line. He got popped. Jim Browner got it. Jim Browner, another big play, was right there and fell on the loose football. Let's pick it up. Good execution, actually, by Texas. On the screen, you see Campbell take everybody deep, and there comes Ham Jones. Now watch the hit here. He gets hit and sandwiched right there. Becker was right there, and Browner's got it back. Another thing you have to be impressed with from Notre Dame, look at all those white shirts around there. Really read the screen that time. First and 10 outside the 27-yard line. Joe Montana quarterbacking. Heavens at the fullback. Vegas Ferguson the tailback. Montana's got it. And he throws to McAfee. McAfee was his favorite target during the year when he caught 54. He took that one to the 17. There's Ken McAfee. He's been double teamed two or three times. This is the first pass in his area. He slips down, but good balance. Gets up, and he's wide open. Coming across the field, he gets knocked down by a block by Ricky Church. He has great hands, the hands of an artist, because he's an artist. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. That's Heavens. Jerome Heavens bounced off and was stopped at the 16 after a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. It was Johnny Johnson up to make the stop. 
We are nearing the end of the first quarter. We have 30 seconds remaining in this period. Waymer and Doman, you'll see alternating. That's Waymer coming into the ball game now for Dan Devine's Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Chris Haynes goes to a wide left. Doman set in the slot. And now we are getting a timeout Notre Dame with 16 seconds remaining. That is the second timeout that has been taken by Notre Dame. That one coming 16 seconds before the end of the first quarter. Montana wants to go over to talk to the staff. We're in a 3-3 tie here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning, Paul Alexander, Don Cricky, Jack Whitaker at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We're in a 3-3 tie. Second down, nine yards to go for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at the Texas 16-yard line. Montana is two for seven, 31 yards in the air. Ferguson and Heavens are the setbacks for the Fighting Irish. Waymer's in motion across. This is Heavens to the outside. Heavens with speed is at the 10. Dives up to the six-yard line. Got in advance of the sticks. It'll be a first and goal at the six-yard line. Churchman made the stop. Good blocking on the outside. Man in motion left. Watch Ferguson sealing off to the inside, and Heavens does the rest. He gets outside. They needed about eight for the first down. He got it easy. Stopped by Churchman. Texas middle linebacker Mark Martinoni really cut off that time, and that's something that had been a source of concern to the Longhorns. He's not very experienced in the middle. He's normally an outside linebacker, as we said earlier. Now time has run out in the period. Time has run out in the period. And so that is the end of the first quarter here at the 1978 Cotton Bowl game in Dallas. And the score is tied. Notre Dame three and Texas three. First down and goal to go at the six yard line. Double tight end. Sayers in there. Urich's in the ball again. And Terry Urich. Touchdown, Urich. Urich took it in from the six yard line. He is a co captain at Notre Dame. And it's the first touchdown of the afternoon. Great blocking off the left side. They pull the guard. It's a cross block on the outside. They caught Dwight Jefferson on the outside. And Urich goes in just barely front. Texas free safety Johnny Johnson was just wiped out on the play. He had no chance. So now Dave Reeve is in to attempt the conversion. Dave Reeve from Bloomington, Indiana. During the year, he was 39 for 44. And the extra point department, Restick puts it down. It's booted up, and it's good. And so as they come back up the field, the score is Notre Dame 10, Texas 3. We are early in the second quarter, 14 minutes, 56 seconds left. It'll be a kickoff now from Notre Dame to Texas. Dave Reeve will kick off. Alfred Jackson has dropped back along with Lamb Jones. Reeve puts it up. Johnny Lamb Jones from Lamb Passes at the nine yard line. He's at the 10, at the 15. Battery along the 20 and stop short of the 22 yard line where they'll start first and 10. The 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular in January, the World Light Heavyweight Championship, Fayo and Parla. And then comes the World Lightweight Championship, Roberto Duran against Esteban de Jesus. I'll tell you, not too many people last with that Roberto Duran. And there'll be the Super Skates and the Hollywood Stuntman competition and much, much more on the 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular. First and 10 now for the Longhorns. Eichern has brought them up. Campbell is in the left set. Instead it goes to Ham Jones and Ham Jones. Moves in advance of the 23-yard line. Picked up a couple of yards on the play. Make it second down and eight. Here are the first quarter stats. Well, 132 yards by Texas, and they still trail in this ball game by seven points. Notre Dame picked up 76 yards on the ground. Notre Dame 186 total yards. Texas 127. Notre Dame had the ball 10 and a half minutes. Texas had it four and a half minutes in the first quarter. There's the story of the football That's game. That's the difference of the ball game so far, Lynch. Second down play coming. The kitchen's long pass, and Jackson can't get it. In and out of the hands of Bergmeier. Bergmeier, 18, covering for Notre Dame. Alfred Jackson, the intended receiver. Bergmeier again. Here they go, Paul, right after Bergmeier. No doubt about it. Both wide receivers to the same side that time. They think that with that kind of speed, 
both of those receivers on the same side. They can put a lot of pressure on the defense, but Notre Dame would have nothing of it that time. This will be a third and eight. Texas in third down conversions is three for five for the afternoon. Notre Dame is leading here by a score of 10 to three early in the second quarter. They're sending Lockett to a wide left. They're bringing Jackson to a wide right. Campbell is in the left set. Keechern is dropping back. And it's Jackson. Jackson pulls it in at the 37-yard line. First and 10 for Texas. Luther Bradley, the All-American cornerback, made the tackle for Notre Dame. Let's take a look at it again. Alfred Jackson coming across the middle, which is something Texas fans love to see because last year after he suffered some broken ribs, Alfred admittedly was a little bit hesitant to come across the middle. He didn't like getting hurt, but look at him give himself up there. He didn't care anything to get the ball. He and he got the, hurt. I was going to say, Lindsay, he didn't hear the footsteps there. Texas players hurt. That is Jackson, who is down and getting attention at the 37-yard line where it is a first down for the Texas Longhorns. McEachin is three for five in the air for 36 yards so far this afternoon. So Texas is trailing by seven as you see Dan Devine along the sideline. Alfred Jackson left the field under his own power. It's first and 10 for Texas. Longhorns have the ball at their own 37. McEachin brings them up now. Lockett's in there at the flanker. Out of the eye formation, Pam Jones ahead of Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell powers up near the 40-yard line. Ken Dyke in to make the tackle. Let's have about three on the play to make it second down and seven. Two of the greatest Cotton Bowl games ever played were played between these two teams in 1970. Texas, making a bid for the national championship, came in to play Notre Dame. Texas won it in the closing moments and won the national championship. The next year, they brought a 30-game winning streak into this Cotton Bowl, 1971. That day, Notre Dame won. So they are one and one in the Cotton Bowl. This is the rubber game here this afternoon. Second down and seven yards to go. McEachern has the ball. He fumbles the ball. And Notre Dame recovers another turnover. And it is Willie Fry on the ball. It is at the 35-yard line. Fry got the football, but watch 89. Ross Browner, he makes McEachern step up into the pocket. He beats the block, a complete mismatch with Ham Jones. Then McEachern loses the football, and Willie Fry was right there. I think that was 79, Ken Dyke, who really caused the fumble. That's him, 79. So it is first and 10 Notre Dame. Montana's under run the attack at the Texas 35-yard line. And the wing T now with a wing right. Taken by Vegas Ferguson. Finds the hole and moves to the 30-yard line. At the start of the season, Notre Dame ran exclusively out of a wing T. Later for the Army game, they went into an I formation, used the I for most of the year. That was off the wing T. Very frequently, you'll see an orange blur coming out of the Texas secondary. What that is, it's a Ricky Churchman who's just about as crazy a defensive back as you'd ever want to see. Patterns himself after another guy uh, here in Dallas, Cliff Harris. Second down and five yards to go. Montana. And it is complete. Taken by his big All-American tight end, McAfee. Outside the 21, Ricky Churchman upset him. And you'll see why Ken McAfee is going to be a number one draft choice in the pros. A great pair of hands. Play action to the right. They got McAfee isolated over here with number eight, Ricky Churchman. He just goes up and makes a great catch. We have a correction on the stats we gave you a moment ago. In the first quarter, Texas, total yardage 186, Notre Dame 127. First and 10 at the 22-yard line, Doman in motion across. Vegas Ferguson. Got about a half yard, and that's all. Brad Sheeran, the Outland Trophy winner as America's outstanding lineman, made the tackle the year before 76. It was Browner, Ross Browner, who won the Outland Trophy. So we have this year's winner and last year's winner on the field this afternoon. Is he the best that ever played in Texas? That's what they say, but think about the company that, that, that we're talking about. Scott Appleton, Tommy Novus, John Elliott. Again, it's Vegas Ferguson. Trying to get to the outside. He's at the 15. Breaks away, gets to the 10, and goes out of bounds. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go at the 10. Johnny Johnson finally pulled him out, along with Morgan Copeland. I'd say Notre Dame just winning the battle of the pits up there, running the football. It's a good hole on the right side. Ground level shot at Vegas Ferguson. He was finally stopped by Johnny Johnson, the free safety. 
It is spotted so that it is first down and goal to go at the 10 yard line. Notre Dame is leading by a score of 10 to 3. We have 11 minutes, 42 seconds left in the first half. Chris Haynes is flipped right there, running a slot right. That's the wing back in the slot. In motion across. That's Waymer. Jerome Heavens. Or rather, Urick. It is Urick. Urick took it in. Urick had come in there at fullback, and he scores his second touchdown of the day. Terry Urick, senior Seven. running back and co captain. The Notre Dame fans are going crazy, and there are a lot of them here. Watch the blocking on the left side. The same exact play, Lindsey. This time, Urick goes outside. He scores his second touchdown of the day. He scored on the same play from four, four or five yards out for his first touchdown. Conversion attempt coming now. Dave Reeve is in to attempt it. They move 35 yards in five plays after recovering the Texas fumble. Joe Restick will hold. Restick puts it down. Reeve puts it up. And it's good. And so the score is Notre Dame 17 and Texas 3. We have 11 minutes, 37 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Johnny Lamb Jones back to receive the kickoff. He's known as the world's fastest football player because he was on the United States Olympic gold medal relay team and the other three don't play football. It is Dave Reeve to kick it off for Notre Dame. Ball is in the air. Jackson got it at the eight yard line. He's at the 15, 20. And now pulled out, he's tried to circle back at the 19. Johnson downfield. The premiere of Challenge of the Sexes returning to Sunday, January 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. That's the exciting man versus woman. Anything you can do, I can do better format. And it's Virginia Way, the reigning Wimbledon champion against Vetus Gerolitis, one of the best tennis players in the world. And a water ski trick jump and a motorcycle jump off. And don't forget the NBA. Sunday, January 8th, 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time, the NBA on CBS. First and 10 for the Texas Longhorns. McEachern is the quarterback. Campbell's got the football. Earl Campbell out to the 22-yard line. He picked up three on the play. It'll be second and seven at the 22. Ken Dyke made the tackle for Notre Dame. Lindsey and Paul, we ought to point out at this stage that this is certainly not the first time this season Texas has been behind. They were behind against A&M, against Houston, uh, even against SMU back here in the Cotton Bowl last October. So they're not about to panic. Admittedly, they have not been 14 down before, but you won't see them deviate from their game plan too much. Second down and seven yards to go at the 22. <laughs> was trying to get it uh, handed off apparently to Campbell. Jim Browner was in there to make the stop, and Becker also on the tackle as McEachern kept the football. And there is no gain on the play. Third and seven at the 22-yard line. This is the third time this year that Texas has played in this stadium. The Texas OU game has always played here. They defeated Oklahoma here. First time they beat Oklahoma in six years. They played SMU here. This is their third time in. Almost like a home game. I think they're going to have to go outside a little bit more, Lindsay. They're going to have to start using that counter option and try to get Campbell to the outside. Kitchen. And he is sacked. Kitchen dropped back there near the 15. Ross Browner and Willie Fry, the bookends met. Well, Ross Browner had 18 sacks on the year. Just a complete domination up front right here by the Irish defense. McKeatron doesn't have a shot here. Here comes Browner, and there's Fry. That'll bring on the funny, funny unit, and that's Russell Erksleben, who averaged 45.9, and his longest was 71 yards against Oklahoma. Lindsay, he'd have won the national championship, but he didn't punt enough times to qualify for it. Standing near his goal line, Schmitz and Bergmeier are deep. Hits across the 50, rolls out of bounds on Bergmeier's side. No return at the 40-yard line, first and 10. So now, Notre Dame gets the ball in good field position. They get it first and 10 at their own 40. It is Notre Dame 17, Texas 3, a 45-yard punt. We have a report from the Notre Dame sideline that Joe Restick, who is the free safety, the punter, and the holder for placements, has a knee injury and may not be back this afternoon. Notre Dame has the ball now first and 10. They have it at their own 40-yard line, and Joe Montana brings them up in an eye formation. Make the handoff. Montana has it. 
Home run. Flamer. And it is intercepted by Texas. Taken by Hatchet. Derek Hatchet intercepted on the corner. Texas gets the ball first and ten. I'll tell you, this is a great turnover for Texas. In fact, this is Notre Dame's first turnover, and they went for the bomb. He had a step on the man, and Hatchet just makes a great interception. Hatchet is so quick that he can give up a step and still recover. He's probably Texas's best uh, defender in terms of man-to-man -man coverage. They will always put him on the other team's best wide receiver. The receiver, Dave Wehmer, was shaken up for Notre Dame, but left under his own power. You're looking at the Texas sideline now as the Longhorns have the football. Well, that turnover really didn't hurt Notre Dame as much as the turnover that hurt Texas. Texas have had three turnovers, and Notre Dame has converted them all into points. Randy Harrison's playing Rustic's free safety now for Notre Dame. And Slavin handing it off to Jones. Ham Jones moved it up to the 25-yard line. Again, at two yards on the play, will make it second down, and eight yards to go for the Longhorns of the University of Texas. You know, Lindsay, so far we haven't said anything about Texas quarterback Randy McEachern, but he's quite a story. Uh, as you probably know, he was actually the Longhorns' third team quarterback going into the season, but after both uh, Mark McBath and later John Arney both went down with leg injuries in the Oklahoma game right here in the Cotton Bowl, McEachern was pressed into service, and what a job he's done. I know what he was last year. He was a spotter for the radio announcer. It's second out and eight yards to go. Campbell is carrying to the 29-yard line. Bob Golick in to make the tackle. It'll be third down and four yards to go. Well, yeah. eight minutes, 37 seconds left to play in the first half. I was going to say, so far, the yards that Earl Campbell is coming by are very, very tough yards. They are really swarming. Notre Dame defense has been outstanding so far in this first half. Third and four. McEachern on his stats. McEachern drops back. Intercepted. Oh, yeah. Becker has it at the 30. Doug Becker is out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Boy, Lindsay, the game plan for Notre Dame is working beautifully. They were hoping to get Texas in a throwing situation and just hope that McEachern would try to throw it up for grabs. And Doug Becker makes the fourth turnover for Notre Dame here in the first half. James made the tackle. Here it is. McEachern steps up. He's trying to throw a little pattern to his tight end, Gil Harris. Badly thrown ball and Becker right in his arm. Another turnover. Notre Dame first and 10 at the Texas 20-yard line. Motion across from the wing back. That's Waymer. Jerome Evans, and he is at the 17-yard line. Martin Noni, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. <laughs> Gained three yards on the play at second down and seven. Getting back to the interception a few seconds ago, you'll notice that so far most of McEachern's passes have been of the drop back variety. That's not normally his game. He's really a much better rollout passer. They've got Chris Haynes far to the left side. They've got Doman as a wing back right. Running backs are evened up. Montana. Montana. Well, it was McAfee for whom it was intended. Just getting rid of it. It's third and seven at the 17 yard line. Joe Montana, who came off the bench in the Purdue game to bring Notre Dame from behind, and he's been quarterbacking them ever since. Two years ago, he came off the bench against North Carolina, came off the bench against the Air Force to lead Notre Dame to victories. He missed last year with a shoulder separation, Joe Montana. Montana says he was most discouraged when he got to Notre Dame and found that he was listed as the number 12 quarterback. <laughs> oh, come on, that's just a story. Talking you know, back well. now, Montana's throwing. And it's in the end zone, touchdown! Vegas Ferguson, Vegas Ferguson, touchdown Notre Dame. Well, everything's going right for the Irish. Joe Montana. He's got the quick release. He's going to be a fine pro quarterback. He's a good drop back. Watch how he stands right there under a cool rush. Now watch the ball just come back right to Ferguson. A great catch. Martinoni, the middle linebacker, covering the halfback deep. The old situation of, uh, you know, you hear it so many times, but the quick back isolated on the middle linebacker, Martin only just couldn't make the play. Conversion attempt coming now. It's going to be Bergmeyer holding instead of Restick, who is out with the injury, and Reeve boots it up, and it's good. So now, here in the second quarter, with 7 minutes, 28 seconds left, it is Notre Dame 24, 
and Texas three. Well, let's talk a little bit about the national championship. The Longhorns are the only major undefeated, untied team. They came in 11 and 0, knowing that if they could win here today, they'd win the national championship. But what if Notre Dame wins? Well, it simply means that we will have a host of once defeated teams. There'll be two playing in the Orange Bowl. That means there'll only be one when that's over. Oklahoma and Arkansas are there. Penn State has already finished. They're once defeated. Alabama's in the Sugar Bowl. They're once defeated. Notre Dame will be once defeated. So it'll be left up to the polls. There's the AP. There's the UPI. There's the Football Foundation and Hall of Fame. There's the Football Writers. Take your choice. I'll tell you one thing, Lindsay. If Notre Dame continues, uh, this is a very surprising score here in the first half. You'll see a lot of index fingers raised on just those white jerseys. They think they should be number one if they can hold on. Dave Reeve is putting it up. It's over to Jackson's side of the field. Jackson at the 11-yard line. Alfred Jackson to the 20-25. He gets to the 30-yard line where they'll start first and 10. We'll televise the final rounds of the Grand Prix Masters from Madison Square Garden in New York. The field of eight headed by Guillermo Villas, Jimmy Connors, and Bjorn Borg. Yeah, and the first prize in that one, Lindsay, is only 100 big ones. Thought that might get your attention. The Grand Prix Masters Tennis Championship on CBS. First down and 10 yards to go for the Longhorns of Texas at the 30-yard line. Lamb, Tony Lamb jumps far to the left side. Reach into Campbell. Campbell out to the 32 for two. It'll be second and eight for 32. Ross Browner and Bob Golick made the tackle. Thus far, you've really got to hand it to that Notre Dame defense. They've given Campbell nothing, and of the, the yards that he has gained, they've all come tough. You know, we, we get too caught up in statistics sometimes, but one very interesting statistic is that of the 1,700 yards that Earl gained this year, 1,100 of them came after he was hit once. Second and eight, McEachin brings them up. Mike Lockett's far to the left side for the Longhorn. Kitchen goes to Lockett. Incomplete, incomplete pass. Jim Browner was covering. It's third down and eight yards to go at the 32-yard line. Mike lost his concentration that time. He's a, he's a sophomore out of Fort Worth. He runs probably the best patterns on the team. He was a starter earlier in the year. Had some physical injuries. Was knocked, uh, you know, out of the lineup for a while. Still gets to play quite a bit. Got a good pair of hands, but didn't look the ball in that time. I'm well, sure. I was going to say, Lindsay, a 21-point lead may get Texas out of their game plan. I think if they do that, Paul, they're in trouble. They've got to stick with what they do best is try to run the football, then throw it. Third down and eight yards to go. McEachin. And it's complete across the 50-yard line. Taken by Gil Harris, the tight end. Jim Browner made the tackle first and 10 for Texas. Super catch by Gil Harris this time. Watch him just go forward and find the seam in between the corner and the safety. Great catch. As we said earlier, he's not known as a receiver, but uh, you can never tell it by watching that one. I'm sure you were aware that there was a lot of emotion involved in the crowd's reaction to the announcements made of the starting lineup here today. It's been said that everybody has two favorite teams, Texas and the team that's playing Notre Dame. Johnny Jones, Garrett. Steve Heimkreider in to make the tackle. Second down and five yards to go at the 45-yard line. That is Johnny Lamb Jones coming back onto the field now. Lockett is coming off. We have five minutes, 54 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Jackson is going to the left side. Johnny Lamb Jones is coming to the right side. Lamb Jones and Campbell in the eye formation for McEachern. That's Campbell, and he's got running room at the 40, 35, 30. The there Heisman Trophy winner down to the 27-yard line, first and 10 for Texas. That's the Longhorns' bread oh, and butter. Right here. And they need to have Earl Campbell spark this football team, Paul. This may help. Earl Campbell showing what he can do the best. He goes inside or outside. Randy Harrison came up from his safety to make the tackle. And you'll notice Long that was... You'll notice that was out of the eye formation, and that's a formation that Texas will go to more and more the more they're in trouble. They think if they line Earl up seven yards deep, give him that much momentum, he's kind of hard to stop. Well, he is kind of hard to stop. In the eye formation once again. Earl Campbell's got the ball. Got to the 25-yard line, picked up about two to make it second and eight there, and Mike Calhoun came in to make the tackle for Notre Dame. 
Notre Dame 24, Texas 3. Five minutes remaining to be played in the 1978 Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas. Texas needs to put a touchdown on the board before the second half starts. Uh, this drive, very, very important for Texas momentum, I would say, Paul. They need to put some points on the board in a hurry. This is a surprising first half. If you believe number one ranked team would be behind by 21. Ronnie Mish is on the wide left now for Texas, and this is Campbell again. Hop to the 22-yard line, picked up three. It'll be third and five. Bob Golick, the middle guard, made the tackle. That's the 18th carry for Earl Campbell here in the first half. He's got about 80 yards rushing. This looks like one of those 30 carry busy afternoons for Earl. Third down and five yards to go. Here comes Lockett back into the ball game. Mish is coming out for Texas. Lockett's going to a wide left. Running backs a split. The feature to Lockett. Little low and incomplete. Now let's go down to Don Cricky. Let's go to Don Cricky. Well, we didn't go let's, down to Don. Well, we go down to Don Cricky later. <laughs> Isn't that a nice coat he has on? <laughs> Looks like one Paul Horning had earlier in the day. Take care of a man, Don. Keep him warm down there on the sidelines. Eric Slavin is in to attempt a field goal. Keep in mind, he's booted one for 67 yards. It's going to be Churchman holding for him, and this will be a 39-yard attempt. Churchman puts it down, and it's blocked. Jim Browner has it at the five-yard line, and uh, it's just stood there for a moment and finally scattered over across, not knowing that a block punt can be advanced. He elected to simply try to down it as though it went extra point. This ball is just poorly kicked by Eric Slavin, as you'll see, uh, just a very low trajectory on the ball. The protection really pretty pretty good, as you see. It was just kicked very poorly. Russell missed the last two games of the regular season with a leg injury, and perhaps it's bothering him now. And here's Jim Browner going after the football. He thinks it's a dead football, but Notre Dame has it inside their own 10 at the 6. First and 10 for the Irish at the 6-yard line. Joe Montana is still quarterbacking. This is Vegas Ferguson. Vegas Ferguson gets it up there just short of the nine yard line. Clock is running with three minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the first half. Notre Dame is leading Texas 24 to three. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Martin Oney, Hamilton, and therefore Texas. At least five number one draft choices in this football game. At least five and one pro general manager told me seven in this game today. Running room. Taken there by Heavens, and he moved it out to the 20-yard line. Just good blocking at the point of attack right there. A little cross blocking right in the middle, and they get the middle linebacker a standoff, and Heavens cuts for daylight, picks up the first down. We invite you to stay with us during the halftime intermission. We'll have the Notre Dame band, the Texas band, the Kilgore Rangerettes, and their band. First and 10 at the 20-yard line, motion across from the wing back. That's Waymer. Instead, they gave it to Heavens. But the Texas defense stacked him up for no gain. Let's go down now to Don Cricky. Lindsay, I just talked with Joe Restick, the Notre Dame free safety, as you pointed out, is out of the lineup right now. It's unlikely he'll play again this afternoon. He has a contusion of his right thigh, and it's tightening up on him. He has difficulty walking, let alone running. Of course, he's a very instrumental part of Notre Dame's attack in that he is a punter and is a position punter. Our young sophomore Kevin Muno will probably come in for him. Lindsay. All right, Don. Second and 10 at the 20 yard line for Notre Dame. Vegas Ferguson got two yards to the 22, where it'll be third down and eight yards to go. Ferguson getting up slowly. Bill Acker was in to make the tackle for Texas. As you know, in college football, there is no two minute warning, but we have two minutes remaining to be played in the first half. Lindsay, you know, a minute ago we were talking about the trouble Texas was having with their linebackers. Look who's playing the middle now. Mark Hamilton and Martin Oney has been moved back to the weak side. Third down play coming. Montana popping it on and out to Chris Haynes. Just across the 30-yard line. Caught him in the weak side blitz. 
This is Glenn Blackwood, number 37. He's giving Haynes so much room. Montana right there got off the pass after being rushed. Good pass by Montana under the circumstances. Haynes has got it very close for the first down. They got to bring the chain all the way across and measure at the sideline for the possible first down. Vance Carlson, the referee, and it's a first and 10 Notre Dame. And they should be able to run the clock out now for the first half. Notre Dame has broken its record for the all-time team receptions with 164. Their offense during the course of the year was pretty well divided. Just about equal to running as against passing. 135 left to play in the first half. Notre Dame is leading 24 to 3. Five drop play to Heavens. Heavens is up to the 40. Got good speed and he gets to the 46 yard line. Ricky Churchman made the tackle first and 10 Notre Dame at their own 46. Boy, Heavens makes a real good move on Glenn Blackwood, the right cornerback here. Roll out draw. We got a standoff and then Heavens breaks to the outside right there. Glenn Blackwood should have made the tackle, but Heavens made a good move on him. <coughs> Heavens now 49 yards and seven carries, Lens. He had 994 during the season, missed being a thousand yard rusher by only six. Notre Dame's had only 1,000 yard rusher. That was Al Hunter. Montana's throwing. Haynes on a comeback and incomplete. He dribbled it underneath his body. Incomplete second and 10 at the 46 yard line. And he beat Glenn Blackwood again. Glenn is the brother of Lyle Blackwood of the Baltimore Colts and uh, Lindsay, I think if they're going to go to the air, it looks as if Glenn Blackwood is giving the Notre Dame receivers a little too much room out there. Paul, he almost has to. He doesn't really have a lot of speed, and he's uh, not the biggest guy in the world either. What he does have is a lot of finesse, and he is a very, very tenacious athlete. Doman's going to a wide right. Chris Haynes to a wide left for Notre Dame. They're running out of an eye formation. Montana repeats and has the ball. Montana's throwing to Doman, and it's incomplete out. Hatchett was the man there, number three, who was trying for the interception, third and ten. Notre Dame at their own 46. The incompletion stops the clock. 1-11 remaining in the first half. Artificial turf here at the Cotton Bowl installed after a couple of teams in 1970 tore the field up in the mud. A couple of teams named Texas and Notre Dame. So artificial turf was installed at the time. setback now for Notre Dame. Now the draw play. Evans, Jerome Evans to the 43. I think he got the first down. I think he first and two. 10. End zone shot here of Evans. Notre Dame quickly could call timeout here. Now they're thinking at least three. Evans just picks his hole beautifully and he comes up with the big first down for the Irish. Super blocked by the Irish center, uh, Dave Huffman, on middle linebacker Mark Hamilton. I hate to keep harping on this, but Texas is getting hurt in the middle. Huffman, of course, from Dallas, Texas. Dropping back is Montana throwing long, and his hands, and he is across the sideline, incomplete. Keep in mind, you only have to have one foot in in college, and Montana was right on the money. Let's see if we can pick it up. Montana's got all the time in the world to throw the football. Great pass protection. This is Haynes. Great camera shot here. Ooh, ooh, looked like he had his foot in there, but Awful the referee, close. a judgment call. Texas felt very strongly going into the game that they had to put an effective pass rush on Montana to contain him, and thus far they haven't gotten near him. 46 seconds left to play in the first half. Notre Dame 24 to 3. Montana throwing to McAfee. Incompleted pass, says the ruling. It'll be third and 10 at the 43-yard line. Incidentally, Jerome Evans now has 2,013 career, career yards rushing at Notre Dame. Pretty good stick that time by Johnny Johnson coming up from his free safety position. He's a sophomore from uh, LaGrange, Texas, and he was one of the most highly sought-after high school players in the state a year ago. Vegas Ferguson just came back into the ball game. Tom Doman alternating in as Waymer went out. This is a big third and 10. Clock was stopped on the incompletion at 41. Dickerson's in there, the wide receiver, Ty Dickerson. They throw the screen left to Vegas Ferguson, but he was popped right away by Martin Noni. Mark Martin Noni got to him immediately. At the 49-yard line. 
Yeah, Mark's a little frustrated, and he's taking out some of that anxiety. As you'll see, he's back at his weak side linebacker position now. He started the game in the middle in place of the injured Lance Taylor. He kind of got chewed up out there, but he's back home now, and somebody's got to pay for it. Of course, they miss Lance Taylor. He was the number one tackler for Texas all year long and a great one. Super athlete. He, of course, has to miss this ball game because of the separated shoulder that he sustained in the Texas A&M game. And now it's going to be Muno and to do the kicking. Kevin Muno will do the punting with uh, Restick out of the ballgame for Notre Dame. You know, is from Los Angeles, California. He's a sophomore. You well, see we one of the fine punt return men in America dropping back, Johnny Johnson. Oh, this is going to be a treat. This guy's returned 44 punts this year, which is an all-time Texas record. He's uh, returned them at about 12 yards a clip, which ain't too bad. And many times when he drops back there, the Texas band will strike up the Tonight Show theme and go, here's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> he took one, what, 52 yards back against Virginia. He's very dangerous. Kevin Muno in deep punt formation with 28 seconds remaining in the first half. Notre Dame 24, Texas 3. I'd go after him. I'd try to block it. Got to. They're rushing 10. <laughs> Muno puts it up high and short. There'll be no return. It is out of bounds at the 32-yard line. It was a 19-yard punt, so it'll be first and 10 now for Texas. To see what they can do in the remaining 22 seconds in this half. And again, we invite you to stay with us during the halftime intermission when we'll be entertained <laughs> by the Notre Dame Band, the Texas Band, the Kilgore College Band, and the Kilgore Rangerettes. Lockett's going to a wide left. Jones is set in the slot left. Honey Lamb Jones, that is Earl Campbell on a delay, and Earl Campbell. Rambles through to the 42, and I think he's got the first down. Willie Fry made the tackle. Notre Dame in a prevent defense now. Three down linemen. Texas quickly calls timeout. 15 seconds to go. 24 to 3. Very surprising here in the first half. Notre Dame's defense has kept Texas from the end zone, and Texas ranked third in the country in scoring just under 40 points a game. This is a charge Texas timeout. The Cotton Bowl record, incidentally, for runs from scrimmage is 95 yards. It was Dickie Magel for Rice against Alabama in the 1954 game, and that has stood up through the years here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Did you see that one from this booth? I mm -hmm. saw that one from this very booth. This booth is just like it was then. <laughs> and I think congratulations, Paul, are in order for our, our boss sitting to the left, Lindsey Nelson, the voice of the Cotton Bowl. 18 years. This is Lindsey's 18th Cotton Bowl. I'll tell you what, just hanging around him this week here in Dallas has been a lot of fun. Incidentally, here's a halftime score that'll interest you. At the end of the first half, Alabama 13, Ohio State nothing in the Sugar Bowl. Woody's not going to like that. But he's not going to like that at all. Dan Devine, the head coach. And uh, we're going to try to have a few words with Dan Devine as his team leads the field here in just a few seconds. First and ten. Back up, back up. Oh, Lamb Jones. Lamb Jones has got it. First and ten at the 25. Eight seconds on the clock. They call timeout immediately to stop it. A big play for the Texas Longhorns who won on that board once again. Paul and Lindsay, this is exactly what they've been trying to do all day long. Just the streak pattern to Lamb Jones, and nobody's going to streak with him. What they're trying to do is get a one-on-one -on -one situation between Lamb and the strong safety Jim Browner, because quite frankly, they think Browner is the weak link in the Texas secondary, or rather the Notre Dame secondary. He might have pulled a hamstring, too. He's being helped off, and they need his speed in the second half, being down by 21. Those sprinters are very, very delicate animals, and I guess when your hamstrings are strung like his are, it uh, doesn't take much to throw them out of whack. Let's see if we can pick it up, Paul. He goes up. Had to turn back for the ball, and that's probably what caused it. Right there, right there he pulled it after about the first couple of steps. Yeah, definitely. Seen hold on to his left side. No doubt about it, left hamstring. 34-yard pickup on the play. We'll identify the Pauls. We're hearing a lot of Pauls here in the booth this afternoon, <laughs> so we'll identify them. There's Paul Alexander and there's Paul Harding. Paul Alexander from Austin, of course, is the host of Coach Fred Aker's show. He is the sports director of our CBS affiliate. Paul Harding is from Louisville, Kentucky, and other points. <laughs> Louisville's my home. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. McEachern putting it up, and it's Jackson. Jackson's got it. 
incomplete. He had it just for a moment. Had it Bradley covering. Jackson had it just for a second. It's an incompleted pass. I'll say one thing about Texas. Their passing offense is just go for the home run. They don't fool around with uh, little turn-ins and turn-outs. They throw it to their speed men. Jackson had the football right in his hands, could not hold on. Difficult catch, admittedly, but he's the kind of guy that's been making just that kind of catch all year long. And it's <laughs> we're at the stage right now where Texas really needs it. And he may just come back into the ball game now for Texas. It is second down and 10 at the 25. Two seconds on the clock. Two seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the 1978 Cotton Bowl. McEacher, time has run out. Incomplete. Wait. Penalty marker, penalty marker. Hold it. Hold it. There's a flag. It's going to be against Jim Browner. There is a flag. It's going to be against the strong safety on Notre Dame's defense. The clock had run out, but the game, the halftime, will not end on a penalty. Cannot end on a defensive foul, and so now... The officials are in conference, and that is Vance Carlson. This here. That's an offense. Notre Dame. First down. First down for Texas. First down on the pass interference. It is spotted at the 13-yard line. Forget the field goal. They're going for it. They're going to go for it to try to get a touchdown on the board. They're trailing 24 to 3. They get this play. Time has run out on the clock, but they get this play. It cannot end the period on a defensive foul. Now Notre Dame calls a timeout. Notre Dame has called a timeout. What's happening, Doug Becker, the defensive uh, captain who calls the play, he's on his way over to talk to George Kelly and Dan Devine over there. Kelly uh, handles the defense from up here in the press box, and I'm sure they're going to go over a little strategy right there. Joe Yanto to his left, and there's Fred Akers talking to his quarterback, McEachern. Fred Akers, of course, almost everybody's coach of the year in his first year at Texas. He played his college football at Arkansas. He was a great high school coach and then came to Darrell Royal staff. He went out to Wyoming, coached two years at Wyoming last year, had his team as co-champions of the Western Athletic Conference in the Fiesta Bowl, where they were rolled over by Oklahoma. But then he went to Texas. He ditched the wishbone, put in the veer, his eye, told Earl Campbell to get from 235 down to 220, and he has him in here undefeated. Lindsay, I'm going to, I think that was the first penalty of this ball game. Yes, it was. The first penalty of the ball game coming as time runs out, giving Texas one more shot to throw it up in the end zone. So Texas has decided on the strategy they will employ. This is one play strategy. Alfred Jackson coming wide to the right side, and that's where it's going. Gun walks. And in there for a touchdown. It is taken by Mike Lockett. Mike Lockett for the touchdown. How do you like that for one play? Well, Mike. this this is the bowl, the bowl for the national championship. And Texas, this might do something for him at halftime. Lock it right over the middle on a post pattern, double covered. He holds on to the football. Straight drop back action from McEacher. Good throw right on the money. And Mike Lockett, as we said, was a very heralded receiver in high school. And he's earning his keep right there. Gets the horns back in the ball game. Andy Harrison was there to make the stop. We have a conversion attempt coming now. Erksleben, Churchman puts it down. Erksleben boots it up. It's good. And so, that is the end of the first half. And the score is Notre Dame 24 and Texas 10. As both teams stream for the tunnel now. Both teams streaming for the tunnel as Texas scores on the last play of the first half to cut the lead. It is Notre Dame 24 and Texas 10 at the end of the first half. Notre Dame having taken an early lead, but Texas having stormed back here in the closing moments of well, the period. Psychologically, uh, Lindsay, I think that's going to be a great boost for the Texas Longhorns. They're going to go in that locker room. Let's go down to Don Crickey. All right, here is Dan Devine. Dan, that was a dramatic comeback by Texas late in that second quarter. Well, they have a team with a lot of pride, Don, and we we're, uh, were afraid that they would do that. That's a good play by Texas. We had man coverage and the blitz on, and they got the ball off and got a very key score. Now, I know coming into the game, you and your coaches and your players were very confident about beating Texas. Did you expect it to be like this at the half? Well, we weren't very confident, Don. We felt we'd worked hard, and that, uh, we had a good football team. We know Texas is uh, number one, and a lot of ball to be played yet this half. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be a great football game. We've got to kind of regroup ourselves. Uh, we have the lead, but Texas has the momentum. All, uh, 
adds up to another great college game. I think everybody's going to stay tuned. Good luck. Thank you. Dan Devine, the coach of Notre Dame. Now let's go back up to Lindsey Nelson. All right, Don Cricky, it's halftime here, and we're ready for the halftime pageantry, and this is the Fighting Irish Band, Notre Dame. The Notre Dame Band of the Fighting Irish is under the direction of Robert O'Brien. Assistant directors are James Phillips and Reverend George Wiskirchen. Notre Dame Band will perform the most famous circus march ever, Carl King's Barnum and Bailey's favorite. Feature of the Notre Dame Band. It's halftime here at the Cotton Bowl. Notre Dame is leading by a score of 24 to 10. The Notre Dame band is on the field. Halftime and Notre Dame is leading Texas by a score of 24 to 10. As the team start to come back onto the field, Texas knowing that they've got to come from behind if they are to win and win with it, undisputed possession of the national championship. The Fighting Irish knowing that they can maintain their lead and win, They'll lay claim to the national championship. We have one more half of great football coming between Notre Dame and Texas. What a great halftime show, and I think we're going to be in for us. another half of great football. Is I guess the difference in this football game has been the turnovers. Texas had, had four turnovers in the first half, and Notre Dame put 24 points on the board. The captains now at mid. Okay. At the middle of the field, Texas. All right, Texas won the toss, so defense. we'll have Notre Dame. We'll get their choice this time. They'll receive. Yeah, we'll okay. turn this goal down. All right, turn around this way, please. Okay. Notre Dame then chooses receive. Shake hands. I think, men, we're about ready to go. All right, let's go down now to Don Cricky. All right, Lindsay, here, of course, is the coach of the Longhorns, Fred Akers. Fred, your team twice this season came from behind against highly ranked teams, Oklahoma and Arkansas. Can you do it again in this game? Well, we're getting ready to find out. That's exactly what we're going to try to do. And we're not a team that quits. I know that. Will you come out of your game plan at all? Throw more. No, we're going to do just what we plan to do when we start. All right, Coach Fred Aker, let's go back up to Lindsay. All right, Don, as we start the second half, Notre Dame 24, Texas 10. Dan Devine along the sideline, ready to send the Irish back onto the field. Terry Urich is back there with Steve Schmitz to receive the second half kickoff. Russell Erksleben will kick it off for Texas. Teed up on the 40. He might kick it between the goalposts from there. Just in case he does, it does not count as a field goal. This is a kickoff. 24 to 10. Notre Dame is leading as we start the second half. Erksleben is waiting for the whistle of referee Vance Carlson. To start forward, and there it is. Down into the end zone. Yurik will not run it out. Touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. You know, Lindsay, if I were going to guess, uh, there's the first half statistics. And actually, Texas outgained Notre Dame by over 50 yards because we were talking about those four turnovers has been the difference in this ballgame. So now, Notre Dame with Joe Montana at quarterback. I think Freddie Akers had to tell his Texas team at halftime, Paul, this is the most important defensive series for us right now. We've got to stop Notre Dame, hold them deep in their territory and get good field position. He said some other things too. Jerome Heavens carries for Notre Dame. Six yards out to the 26th where it'll be second and four. Ricky Churchman up from his strong safety to make the tackle along with Mark Martin Noni. Paul and Lindsay, this Texas team is a very emotional ball club. They're also an extremely close team. You always get the feeling being around them that they genuinely like each other. And they take the situation very, very personally. We look for them to pull together. Second down, four yards to go for Notre Dame. Running draw, and it's Vegas Ferguson. 
A yard short of the first down at the 29, where it'll be third and one. Steve McMitchell in to make the tackle. McMichael in to make the tackle for Texas. There's your quarterback comparison. First half, McEachel, 6 out of 12, 107. Montana, 6 for 17, 56 yards. Both through for one touchdown. Again, the turnover is the difference. Third down and a yard to go, and the Texas defense is being exhorted by the crowd here. But it's a first and ten as Jerome Evans picked it up just across the 30 for Notre Dame. It was Johnny Johnson up from his free safety to make the tackle. I could also guess what Dan Devine said at halftime, and he said, boys, we've got 30 more minutes of football. You've got a two-touchdown lead. If you want the national championship, go get it. Notre Dame 24, Texas 10, early in the third quarter. On a beautiful day at the Cotton Bowl. Try again to draw the running draw, and it's Vegas Ferguson. They lunge for a couple of yards up there to the 37-yard line, where it'll be second and three. Copeland and Martin Noni made the stop. And they're controlling the line of scrimmage right here. You see Huffman with a great block, right? He took the man, the nose guard, and made him good block. Ferguson keeps his balance here. Good running by Vegas Ferguson. Jerome Heavens, and Heavens is up there at the 45-yard line. And a first and 10. Huffman is just controlling Mark Hamilton right now, Paul. Huffman being the center of Notre Dame, and Mark Hamilton landing head up right on his nose. Hamilton's a senior from New Mexico. He hasn't logged a lot of playing time this year. As we said earlier, he's been pressed into service because Texas is having trouble in the middle. They're short of the 45-yard line. Tried to draw again, trying those delays, and Heavens gets up to the 49-yard line. Picked up about five, where it'll be second and five. Martin Noni again in to make the tackle. Well, they find a piece of meat, they chew on it, don't they? They're coming sure back at Hamilton again and again and again. And why not? It's about a little weakness. And that has to mean that Dave Huffman, this junior out of Dallas, doing a good job at the center. Yeah, always does a good job. And again, the same way, Vegas Ferguson. Lunging to get to the sticks, and I think he got it. First and 10 for Notre Dame. They have the ball at the Texas 45-yard line. Well, this drive started on Notre Dame's 20-yard line. They have kept the ball right on the ground. 12 minutes, 13 seconds left in the third quarter. Doman to a wide right, Chris Haynes to a wide left. Now Montana has it. And throws to McAfee. Ball skirted away. Incompleted pass is the call. Incompletion, it's a judgment call. And instead of reception and fumble, the judgment is incompleted pass. And McAfee's not too happy with it either. Here's a little rollout right play action. Good pickup by Vegas Ferguson. Now McAfee right there gets really hit. Boy. Now what the ruling was, the referee right on top of the play ruled that he did not have possession. And again, that big hit coming from Johnny Johnson. He's a free safety, and he doesn't have really good size for a free safety, although he is very tall, but he was sticky. Watch that forearm shiver. Second down and 10 at the 45-yard line. Jerome Heavens picked up two yards to the 43 as Morgan Copeland made the tackle. It'll be third down and eight yards to go, Notre Dame in Texas territory. Tom Doman coming in with the next play. Let's see if they go to the big tight end, Ken McAfee. He's only caught two passes there in the first half for 18 yards. Tight end to the right side. Doman far right. Chris Haynes to the left side. Running back to the right formation. Antana. There's a screen left to Ferguson. Griffin. Ferguson walking a tight rope down the sideline. Now, ball got away, but Notre Dame retains possession at the 27. Perhaps 28 as they mark it. Notre Dame at the 28-yard line of Texas. Vegas Ferguson walking the tightrope. Still was a big first down play. They needed about eight yards on the screen left to Vegas Ferguson. He's going to get a break now. He goes out and Terry Urich comes in to replace him. Fergus, re Fergus really did a good job there because uh, if you'll notice, Johnny Johnson actually read the play, had a chance to make the tackle, didn't execute. 
Give it to Jerome Heaven to the 22-yard line. Picked up about seven to make it second down and three yards to go. They're killing them straight up the middle. Looks like they get four or five there anytime they want to call. Yeah, you know, you really hate to get down on somebody because obviously the man's doing the best job he can, but in his defense, he's not logged a lot of playing time this year, but that's where they're going. Second down play coming for Notre Dame. That's Doman in motion across from the wing left. Larry Urich is carrying. Stacked him up. Texas has certainly realized, obviously, that they are getting killed in the middle, so they've gone back now to the alignment they had at the start of the ball game. Mark Martinoni is back at middle linebacker, and Robin Sinline's back in the ball game on the weak side. So Mark Hamilton's been taken out. Third and three. Mark Sy is in there now, double tight on the lineup for Notre Dame. Boy, Lindsay, they've controlled the ball for almost five minutes on this drive. Third and three. At the 22-yard line. Montana. That throws to McAfee, incomplete at the goal line. It'll be fourth and three at the 22. He was open, ball just overthrown by Montana. Well, he had a decision to make here. He could have run the football, picked up the first down, but McAfee slipped behind the defensive back there, and Montana just overthrew him a little bit. Defender on the play, Glenn Blackwood, and he's not much of a physical match for McAfee. 39-yard field goal attempt coming up now for Reeve. Dave Reeves' longest during the season was a 51-yarder. Bergmeyer will hold for him with Restick out with an injury. Alex Football, you use the T, of course. And it is short. It is short. It'll be put in play at the 20-yard line. First and 10 at the 20 under college rules. So the score is still Notre Dame 24, Texas 10. Nine minutes, 58 seconds remaining in the third quarter of the Cotton Bowl game in Dallas. Texas has the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They are trailing by 14 points. McEachern brings them up. Running backs are split. Camel in the left set. Earl Camel's got it. Moves in for three yards to the 23, where it'll be second down and seven. Ross Browner came to make the tackle. Let's take a look at 55, the middle linebacker, Bob Golick, only a junior, and he'll probably be a number one round draft choice next year. He's keying on number 20 as Ross Browner got him low, and Golick was right there. Alfred Jackson goes far to the left side. Now second down and seven yards to go. Campbell is still in the left set. Rolling is McEachern. Incomplete, trying to get his tight end, Gil Harris. Gil Harris, 82, the man for whom it was intended. Third and seven. The Horns normally do not like to go to their tight ends, so what that's telling you is that Notre Dame is doing an excellent job covering the wide receivers. I think McEachern uh, might have made a bad decision on that play. He could have run the football, I think, and picked up the first down there. He could have, but he has been admonished by the Texan, Texas coaching staff not to run the ball unless absolutely necessary. He's not a good runner. He doesn't pretend to be. And given the choice between stopping up and throwing and, and keeping the ball, they'd rather have him throw the thing. It is third down and seven yards to go. Dropping back again is McKitchen. And it is intercepted. Taken by Heimkreider. Heimkreider, the linebacker. It is first and 10 Notre Dame inside the 30-yard line of Texas. The fifth so now, turnover of the day, Lindsay. Or Notre Texas. Dame gets the football. Notre Dame is leading 24 to 10, nine minutes, nine seconds in the third quarter. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning, Paul Alexander, Don Cricky, Jack Whitaker at the Cotton Bowl. And we're delighted to have Paul Alexander with us this afternoon. He is the host of Coach Fred Aker's weekly show in Austin, Texas, as well as the sports director of our CBS affiliate in Austin. Notre Dame has the ball first and 10. They have it at the 29-yard line. Right to the left side to Vegas Ferguson. Hops up to the 25-yard line for a gain of four, where it's going to be second down and six yards to go. Oh, he got popped by Johnny Johnson there. He's going to get up a little bit slow. See if we could pick it up, Paul. Why don't you call this hit? You know, I'm really impressed with Ferguson, because look, he takes a solid shot from Johnny Johnson, 
and just bounces right off it, tries to keep his feet. He is a tough man to bring down, because I'll promise you, Johnson will bomb you. Chris Haynes to the left side, Tom Doma to the right side, running back center eye, and here is the pitch taken by Vegas Ferguson, looking for a place to turn, and there is none. He's cut off at the pass. Hatchet over on the tackle. That's the first time we've seen the true option from Notre Dame, isn't it? That's right. He won't run it too much. Montana, of course, uh, better throwing the football, rolling out, coming back. They don't like to run that option too much with him in there. Third down and about eight yards to go. Ball at the 27-yard line. Third down conversions. They are six of ten. Not a bad percentage. And rolling is Montana, and he's throwing on the run complete. It's taken there by Weimer, who stayed in bounds at the 11 yard, at the 16 yard line, maybe the 15. Wide open, out of the eye. Montana will roll out to the left. It's just a little square out pattern over here, and Montana executes just perfect. Hardest pass for the college throwers to throw. Rolling to his left, going to his left. Dave Weimar on the reception. So it is first and 10 for Notre Dame at the Texas 15 yard line. Running backs in an eye formation. They're on a wing left, and that is Doman, the wing back of cross in motion. It is Yurik carrying Terry Yurik, and he has stopped for a loss of about a foot and maybe as much as a yard. Martin Noni made the tackle. It'll be second and 11 at the 16-yard line. Being outweighed up front is nothing new for the Texas defense. That's normally been the case week after week after week. So you'll notice that to offset that physical mismatch, Texas will do a lot of looping and stunning in games to try to create some confusion in the offensive line. Second out, 11 yards to go. Notre Dame 24, Texas 10. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Notre Dame's running in a slot left. Weimer, slot back in motion across. Montana's got the ball. And he throws to Urich inside the 10. Urich out of bounds at the five yard line. That was just a great pitch that time, Lindsay. Montana to Terry Urich. He was actually covered by Robin Senline on the right side. Watch this now. Now Senline actually has got pretty good coverage there. It's just a good pitch and a good catch. Urich is going to be uh, shaken up right here on this play a little bit. Can't stop that perfect throw. Actually a pretty good job by Senline. So Urich is still down, struggling to get to the first down sticks. And he is still down. In the first half, all four Notre Dame scoring drives started after the turnovers inside the 35. It's going to be a first and goal inside the five yard line when play is resumed. First and goal on the four, Dan Devine, the head coach. That's Merv Johnson right there to his right, the assistant head coach at Notre Dame. First and goal at the four yard line. Notre Dame is leading 24 to 10. Seven minutes, 17 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter of the 1978 Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas. They come up in a wing right. Evans. Back to the three-yard line, and that's all. Second and goal at the three-yard line. Jefferson in on the tackle. You know, I don't think we should go any further, Lindsay. We should mention the offensive blocking for the Irish shop front. Dave Huffman, the center, a junior, 6'5", 247. He's doing a fine job. The guards, Ted Horansky and Ernie Hughes, and the tackle, Steve McDaniels and Tim Foley, have just been outstanding. They've been giving a lot of holes, especially from tackle to tackle, for the Notre Dame running attack. Orsini is in there now. Sia is in at a double tight end. Orsini's in at a running back. Instead, it is Vegas Ferguson hitting in for the touchdown. Vegas Ferguson hit it into the end zone for a touchdown. And there must be a little weakness over there because that's the third time this afternoon that Notre Dame has gone off the left side for three touchdowns. This time it's Vegas Ferguson in the first half. Terry Urich got two at the same spot. Well, they caught him in the game. Texas is in the blitz that time and uh, just ran to the weak spot. So it is now Notre Dame 30, Texas 10 with a conversion attempt coming for the Fighting Irish. Bergmeyer will hold for Dave Reed. Bergmeyer puts it down, Reed puts it up, and it's good. So as they come back up the field in the 1978 Cotton Bowl game after moving 29 yards in seven plays, it's Notre Dame 31, Texas 10. Notre Dame. 
Dave Van is ripping it up as Notre Dame prepares to kick off. Dave Reeve will do the booting. Johnny Johnson is dropped back there in place of Lamb Jones, who hobbled off the field. So it's Johnson and Jackson back deep to receive it for the University of Texas Longhorn. Six minutes, 49 seconds left in the third quarter. Johnny Johnson at the 15 to the 20 to the 25 to the 30-yard line, and Texas will start first and 10 at the 30. Keep in mind that the big one, Super Bowl 12, is coming up on CBS Sunday, January 15th. Boy, I can't wait. Denver against Dallas. A great defense of the Denver Broncos. Well, the Dallas Cowboys with no slouch himself. Lyle Azado, boy, Tom Jackson, and, of course, it's Roger Staubach, Tony Dorsett, Harvey Martin. Boy, what a great matchup. And the Super Bowl today will be 4.30 to 6, an hour and a half pregame show, all on CBS. First and 10 now. Ball is at the 30 yard line for Texas. Future. Bring it off to Campbell. He got three yards out to the 33, where it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Lindsay, that sprint out draw play out of the eye formation has been one of the staples of the Texas attack all year long, and it's uh, really been very, very ineffective today. Notre Dame doing a great job on it. Seven plays, 29 yards, kept the ball two minutes, 20 seconds, did Notre Dame. Six minutes, 24 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Longhorns trying to move the football. Now, keep in mind, they scored in a one-play situation on the last play of the first half of this ball game. Ham Jones from Hamlin, Texas, moved it out to the 35-yard line for two, where it'll be third and five. Ham Crater made the tackle from his left outside linebacker post for Notre Dame. Texas offense now operating without the services of wide receiver Johnny Lamb Jones, the Olympic sprinter. He's uh, out with that pulled hamstring that he suffered in the first half. In his place, uh, Ronnie Mish and Michael Lockett are alternating at that position. Keep in mind that this Texas team, on the road, defeated Oklahoma and Arkansas on successive weekends. Third down and five yards to go. Return and it is batted incomplete. It's Heim Kreider. Heim Kreider batted it down number 58. He's the gentleman just, just got the interception. He comes up with the big third down play for the Irish. So the punting unit comes on now. And they're starting to put the number one up already. The way they're playing right now, you can't blame them. Hunt formation. Rex Laban is in to do the punting. Schmitz and Bergmeier have dropped back to field the punt for Notre Dame. Bergslaven, an All-American. High trajectory punt. Fair catch signal goes up, and it's made at the 20-yard line. So Bergmeier gathered it in, and they will start first and 10. Just in advance, call it the 21-yard line. A punt of 45 yards and no return. I tell you, that Eric Slavin's a wild character. As we said earlier, he missed the last couple of games of the regular season with a pulled quadriceps muscle. But uh, he said that if healthy, he promised a 70-yard field goal in this game if he got the opportunity. I like the idea when he came back from the injury, he dropped by, kicked one 53 yards, and pronounced himself semi-healthy. <laughs> First and at the 21. Motion across from Weimer. Off the tailback spot, Vegas Ferguson running. He's got the first down. He's out to the 33-yard line. Finally dropped by Hatchet and Johnny Johnson. 13-yard pickup for Vegas Ferguson. And the guys up front are really doing the job. A good end zone shot of this. Now watch the blocking right at the point of attack. Boy, that's a nice size hole, I'll tell you. Ferguson cuts to his right, picks up 13 for a Notre Dame first down. And then a slot right. Running backs in an eye formation for Joe Montana. Doman in motion across. Give it to Jerome Heavens. He gets two yards to the 35, where it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Well, I tell you, when the Notre Dame coaches go over this film uh, after the ball game, they've got to be impressed with the job that uh, Horonsky is doing offensively at, uh, at right guard for Notre Dame because he's got a standoff or better with Texas's Outland Trophy winner, Brad Shearer. Dan Devine speaking to the official. What's he so hot about? I don't know. Second down and eight yards to go. Try the draw play. Across the 40-yard line. Evans carrying. 
And again, I'm going to point out the offensive interior lineman, counting the tight end, Ken McAfee, six of them, averaged 257 pounds. Now, the four defensive down linemen for Texas and their three linebackers averaged 216. I think that has been a big story in this football game. Third and very short here now. Vegas Ferguson carries. Penalty marker is dropped. He lunged up to about in advance of the sticks, but there's a penalty marker to be checked out. Copeland and Churchman made the stop for Texas. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure against Notre Dame will cost them five yards. You know, a minute ago, I gave credit to Ted Horonsky for doing that great job, job on Brad Shear. Well, admittedly, Horonsky has done a great job today, but he's been blocking on Steve McMichael. It's Ernie Hughes that's been putting it on Brad Shear. I say putting it on him as good a job as you can do with a guy like that. Five-yard penalty is marked off. They'll see you Illegal procedure, movement in the line. Notre Dame. Hughes will be a high draft choice. He'll go in the first two rounds also, or three. Brad's finally, probably going to make a couple of dollars himself. I would think so. Shear will be a number one. Third and seven here now, back to 37-yard line. Tried to draw a play, didn't go as Texas read it out, and Steve McMichael was in to make the tackle along with Jefferson. Punting unit comes out now for Notre Dame. Johnny Johnson is dropping back to receive the punt for Texas. Haven't seen a lot of Steve McMichael, the guy that made that tackle today, but he's known as the most enthusiastic player on the Texas team. They say he even likes wind sprints. Again, it's going to be Kevin Muno doing the punting in place of Lestick. Lestick went out with an injury in the first half, and Kevin Muno is doing the punting for Notre Dame. Johnson calls for a fair catch, and he makes it at the 32-yard line where Texas will start. We'll televise the final rounds of the Grand Prix Masters from Madison Square Garden in New York on CBS next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, next Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Guillermo Vilas, Jimmy Connors, and Bjorn Borg. Boy, I tell you, three of the best in the world. And the prize for that one, Lindsay, I wouldn't mind having 100 big ones. Gets your Ooh. attention, doesn't it? It's the Grand Prix Masters Tennis Championship on CBS. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. The feature is the quarterback. Is it to Campbell? Earl Campbell. Got to the 34-yard line where it'll be second and eight. Ross Browner in to make the tackle along with Bob Goley. Texas now with three wide receivers in the ball game. They said earlier today before the ball game that they planned to go with it in the first half. Of course, we did not see that particular formation. But I guess now that uh, down by 21 points with uh, only a little more than a quarter remaining, it's time to start putting it up. And three wide receivers is the way to do it. Two minutes and 37 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Earl Campbell. Now just to the 35 before he's popped back. It'll be third and seven. Bob Golick made the tackle. You know, it's amazing. Here's a guy, of course, he's going to be one of the great pros. He's still on the ground there. He got popped real hard. Earl Campbell, the Heisman Trophy winner. The country's leading rusher this year, the country's leading scorer. Let's look again. Let's see if we can pick up the hit here on the left side. Here's Campbell coming off the left side. A goalie gets him first. And I think he just pulled a muscle. I don't think the tackle was that vicious. Campbell's got 97 yards and 23 carries. Let's see another angle from the end zone. Out of the eye, that's Earl Campbell. You see goalie. Setting the eye, gets hit from the inside by Jeff Weston, the defensive tackle, and Golik's behind him. Well, let's hope that big guy's all right, because he's all class. You know, you read so much about Earl, about his religious beliefs, about his love for his family, about what a tough back background he came from. And I'll tell you, it's all true. It's not hype. He's really a class individual. Looks like he's got some type of leg problem and uh, probably finished for the day. Earl Campbell, one of the great college football players, coming off the field here at the Cotton Bowl. Delbert Thompson is coming to the ball game to replace him. He is a freshman from Hamlin, Texas, number 45, third and seven at the 35-yard line. Keechan 
And it's completed. Did he ever thread a needle with that one? Taken by Alfred Jackson. It's a first and 10 now, Texas in Notre Dame territory at the 47. Yes, sir. That's something Texas has used very effectively all year long. Alfred Jackson on the post route. mckeetron has been having his problems today, but this time he puts it there. Right between two defenders, some kind of tough, courageous catch by Alfred Jackson, who, by the way, averaged 25.5 yards per catch this year. Andy Harrison on the tackle for Notre Dame, first and 10, Texas. Jackson is in the slot left. Place of Campbell, and he got almost to the 45-yard line for two, where it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Delbert Thompson carry. That's Delbert Thompson filling in now for Earl C Campbell. Uh, Delbert is a freshman from Hamlin, Texas. He's from the same hometown as Johnny Ham Jones, and the Longhorns have high hopes for him in the years to come. In fact, he's uh, the heir apparent to Campbell. We have one minute, 20 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. It's Notre Dame 31, Texas 10. Mish is coming to a wide right. Mike Lockett's on a wide left. Jackson on the slot left. The kitchen. Going to Jackson. Back in the end zone, Randy Harrison has it for a touchback. First and 10, Notre Dame at their 20 yard line. Harrison with the interception took it into the end zone at the 20. Well, Texas has no chance here. They're trying to go for the home run. That's exactly what all the defensive secondary for Notre Dame is looking for. They're looking for the bomb. You can see him is double covered back here, and it'll be up in the air. Jackson tips it, and Randy Harrison plays a little juggling match, gets it in the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20. The teacher now three interceptions, and Texas has also lost three fumbles, six turnovers. Heavens, Karen. Out to the 26. Now let's go down to Don Cricky. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, this is Earl Campbell, of course, the great Heisman Trophy winner. He has an injury to his left foot. They're examining it now. Whether or not it's a fracture or a severe sprain, they don't know, but it does appear to be an injury that he cannot put weight on the foot. And whether or not he'll be back is a very moot point right now. Earl Campbell is hurt. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Don Cricky. It's second down and four yards to go. Texas with the ball, or rather Notre Dame with the ball at their own 26. Off the tail of the tandem. Moved out to the 29-yard line. Once again, it is Johnny Johnson there on the tackle along with Jefferson. Well, you hate to see a great back like that end his collegiate career. It'll be third and one. Vegas Ferguson carried. The clock is winding down out of the end of the third quarter. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Two seconds, one second, and time has run out in the period. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Notre Dame 31, Texas 10. We now pause for a word from your local station. As we start the fourth quarter, it is third down and a yard to go for Notre Dame. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning, Paul Alexander, Don Cricky, Jack Whitaker in Dallas, Texas. Notre Dame is leading 31 to 10. Let's try to wedge him out and pick it up, and they did. It's first and ten. Let's go down to Don Cricky. All right, there's more optimism now over Earl Campbell's condition. It appears to be a sprain, no fracture. They've typed the ankle very tightly. They're going to try to put him back in the football game. His mobility is in question, but he will go back in. All They're right, meeting. Don Cricky. Ball is at the 31-yard line, first and ten for Notre Dame, and that is good news. Well, it sure you. is. They really need a guy like that. He needs to break one to get some momentum back in that Texas offense. And nobody wants him worse than Earl does. Montana to Heavens, and Heavens pulled out at the line of scrimmage by Brad Shearer, the Outland Trophy winner and All-American tackle at the University of Texas. It's going to be second down and 10 yards to go at the 31-yard line. A beautiful day here for the Cotton Bowl. Last night, it did not appear that we'd have this kind of weather because there were a few flakes of snow falling around <laughs> in Dallas last night. It was a little bit cool, about 20. Vegas Ferguson. Tried to stretch his body out for a yard, and he got about a foot or so. It's Henry Williams. Call it third down and nine yards to go. He's just short of the 32. The low point of the Notre Dame season came, of course, in their second game when they lost to Ole Miss in Jackson, Mississippi. Notre Dame and most of the preseason prognostications had been touted as possible national championship winners. But then when they lost the early game, they had to sort of regroup, change the offense, 
came back and the big upset was over Southern Cal and they rolled on from there. Vegas Ferguson. Again, it's the Texas defense and Bill Aker. Bill Aker in there at uh, the 32. Lindsay, if they can hold on to this 21 point lead, I think it's gonna be a little bit more than a possibility. It's gonna be a strong possibility. The Notre Dame players have really felt coming into this ball game, they had an excellent opportunity to beat Texas. They were very confident, and they felt if they win this football game, they should be number one. Kevin Milno is back to do the punting. Blackwood is calling for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 41-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Texas. The Longhorns will start at their own 41. We have 12 minutes, 53 seconds remaining to be played in the game. A 27-yard pot by Muno. First and 10 now for Texas. The Longhorns have the ball at the 41-yard line. Geechern still quarterbacking. University of Texas. Earl Campbell carried the football across to the 47-yard line. Earl Campbell back in the ball game, and he carried it. Boy, I like the guts and determination of this guy. He was carried off. Looked like he would not re-enter the ball game. Here he comes right back. They retaped his ankle. He is now over 100 yards rushing. He's got 103 for his 22nd time in his career. He's gone over 100. He got six just there at second down and four yards to go. This time it is. Taken by Johnny Ham Jones and Ken Dyke made the tackle. It's up just short of the 49 again or two. Speaking of the national championship, of course, the Texas Longhorns and their followers have felt that even if they lose, they have as good a claim to the national championship as anybody else because they would be only once defeated. They point out that they've had to defend the national championship, the number one ranking at least, throughout the entire season, something nobody else had to do. Arguments, arguments. Third down and two yards to go. Kitchen throwing, and it's beyond the reach of Alfred Jackson. Let's go down to Don Cricky. Lindsay, there is a very marked contrast in the attitude of this Texas team now here in the fourth quarter as the seconds tick away and the possible national championship with it. This was a very enthusiastic team, even trailing 24 to 10 at the outset of the third quarter. It's not anymore. The Texas players mumbling about the seven turnovers. This has never happened to them before this season. And right now, it's a, a very, really a depressed aura around this team as Notre Dame continues to dominate with the fourth quarter wearing on. Lindsay? All right, Don Cricky, a penalty marker, and the preliminary signal is ineligible pass receiver downfield for Texas. So that is being attended to right now. Lindsay, it's only normal and natural that the Texas team should be somewhat despondent over what's happening to them right now. But as it said so many times before, this is really a class bunch we of had guys. Ineligible man downfield, covered in on Texas, declined. Carry on, Paul Alexander. Okay. As I said, they are a, a marvelously close group of individuals, and they are not about to quit. They will keep uh, firing and scratching and doing the kind of things that have brought them to that 11-0 record that they had going into the ball game. Texas has taken a timeout now in a fourth and three situation with Notre Dame having declined that penalty. Texas called a timeout to find out exactly what they want to do here, trailing in the ballgame by a score of 31 to 10 with 11 minutes, 49 seconds left to play. Uh, I have to go for it. There's no question about that. Three touchdowns behind. And just like Paul said, if they're going to scratch, they're going to have to scratch awful deep to dent into a 21-point lead. They continue to try to run inside against this Notre Dame defense. Well, we got a little time. I think I'd like to just say hello to maybe Notre Dame's number one fan back in Chicago in the hospital, Tootie Cummins, who has never missed a game in 32 years following the Notre Dame at home and on the road. We wish her a speedy recovery and a happy new year. Well said. Notre Dame band is whipping it up here at the Cotton Bowl as Texas comes up in deep punt formation. Mm -hmm. Eric Slavin is uh, back there. I'd have to gamble here. But they snap it short. Three touchdowns down, Lindsay. I'd have to go for it. With the they do snap down. it short. Try the reverse play, and it's read out by Notre Dame. Doug Becker was right there. Fake the handoff. They gave it to number 27. Johnny Johnson. Johnny, Johnny Johnson, Johnson carried the ball, and the ball goes over. On fourth down, they snapped it short, but it was read out. 
A little fancy right here. Out of punt formation. Take it, Paul. Okay, the snap goes to Ricky Churchman. It's on the reverse, and then the ball goes back to Johnny Johnson, who takes it around the left side. Uh, as I said before, they're coming at him with all guns blazing, but Notre Dame's up to it. Well, naturally, it could have fooled the cameraman, but it didn't fool number 43, Doug Becker. First and 10, just across the 50-yard line. This is Jerome Evans, and he is popped. Dwight Jefferson came in to make the tackle, and it is back there at the 49-yard line. You know, there's been some bad blood between these two teams. I think a lot of it goes back to the Heisman Trophy presentation. I know that Ken McAfee, when he accepted the Outstanding Receiver Award, didn't think that what he was saying was so inflammatory, but some of the Texas players took offense to it. We'll get back to it in a moment. Second down and 12 yards to go. Montana has the ball. And the catch is made in bounds at the 34-yard line. Waymer, the wing back. Waymer pulled it in. Here's Montana. It's a little square out pattern on the right side, about 12 yards deep. Dave Waymer, a sophomore out of Charlotte. Good move right there. The That's Texas right. corner man have really been giving the Notre Dame receivers a lot too much room. It's much at too much. 34 yard line of Texas. First and 10, Notre Dame at the Texas 34, 10 minutes, 58 seconds left to play. This is Heaven. Jerome Evanson to the 29-yard line. Here is a final score in the Sugar Bowl game. Alabama 35, Ohio State 6. Alabama 35, Ohio State 6. So that's another team that will be laying claim to the national championship. They are Bryant's Crimson Tide is a once-defeated team. These are the Notre Damers who already have begun to lay their claim to the national championship. It'll all be decided in the postseason poll. Vegas Ferguson into the 26-yard line, short of the sticks. Brad Shira, along with Dwight Jefferson, made the tackle. Notre Dame now very content to keep it on the ground. If they can pick up three or four yards every carry, 30 seconds go off that clock, 25 seconds. Heavens is now over 100 yards. 22 carries for Jerome Heavens, 101 yards. He's only a junior, and I know Dan Devine is going to be very happy to have him back. Third and two at the 26-yard line. Double tight end, Mark Saya is in there. Vegas Ferguson looking to get the six. He's got it. First down, Goodbye. he's gone. He'll never catch him. He's gone. Touchdown, Vegas Ferguson. He has great speed. He can accelerate, and he did. What a cutback. Vegas Ferguson. dash for a touchdown. He caught a nine-yard pass in the first half for a touchdown from Montana. Watch this cutback. There's Ernie Hughes. In fact, he got in front of the guard. And he makes a great cut. Vegas Ferguson, only a sophomore from Richmond, Indiana, puts Notre Dame on top 37 to 10. With a conversion attempt coming as Vegas Ferguson goes to the sideline. He missed a good part of the season with an injury. Gave the offense a great boost when he came back to full-time action late in the season. He's carried 21 times for 94 yards here this afternoon. Dave Reeve will attempt the conversion with Bergmeyer holding for him. It's good. So as they come back up the field here at the 1978 Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas, it is Notre Dame 38 and Texas 10. Five plays, 50 yards, kept the ball two minutes and one second, and now it's going to be Dave Reed kicking off. Johnny Ham Jones has dropped back this time. Johnny Ham Jones is back there with Alfred Jackson. Johnny Lamb Jones went out with an injury. Alfred Jackson is waiting at the seven yard line. He's got it to the 10 to the 15, to the 20 to the 25, and out to the 27 yard line. They'll start first and 10. It was Hanker downfield to make the tackle for Notre Dame. CBS Sports Spectacular 1978 will present an exciting calendar of events. In January, it'll feature the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship between defending champion Miguel Coelho and Mate Parlevin. That is next Saturday. And then later, it's the World Lightweight Championship. Roberto Duran, many say he's one of the great fighters of all time. Pound for pound, he'll defend his title against Esteban de Jesus. What a match. And we'll have super skates plus the Hollywood stuntman competition and much more. Be sure to watch the 1978 CBS Sports Spectacular beginning next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The Quayo fight is on next Saturday. There's Bevo, a famed Bevo, Texas Longhorn. 
a violation on the kickoff, and so we'll bring it back and uh, do it all over again. Offsides against Texas. Violation of the kickoff receiving formation, so they kick it from the 45. Some years ago, Paul Horning, I was doing a USC-UCLA game, and Red Sanders was coaching UCLA. He said to me, I have never had a kickoff run back for a touchdown against a team of mine in prep school, college, anywhere. The next day, they kicked to John Arnett. He would have run out into the street if it had been a Tapera style in, <laughs> but there was a violation of the kickoff receiving formation, nullified Arnett's return. They kicked it off again, and still nobody had returned one against Sanders. <laughs> oh, do I remember John Arnett. Dave Reeve putting it up. Johnny okay. Ham Jones at the six yard line dribbles it, but he's on his way to the 15 20 across to the 23 yard line where Texas starts first and 10. Tell you what, man, you've really got to be impressed with the job that the Notre Dame coaching staff has done getting this team ready, don't you? They're so beautifully prepared. They really are. And they were sky high, of course. And it's a little bit easier, you know. A, little, a lot of pressure was on Texas, ranked number one. They knew all they had to do was win uh, by one point. They would have had the national championship locked up. Interesting thing happened. Notre Dame felt that they were so ready that they canceled yesterday's practice. They thought they were ready to go. Here's a pitch to Campbell, Earl Campbell. Ross Browner runs him out of bounds at the 26-yard line. A gain of three yards on the play will make it second and seven. I wish I could have canceled yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these upsets, uh, they do come along, Polly. You know, one guy I really feel particularly sorry for right now is Randy McEachern. You know, what a storybook uh, performance he's turned in this year. He was a third-team quarterback, uh, was redshirted his sophomore year, missed his entire junior year with an injury, and they would not be in this ballgame were it not for him. It's too bad he's having such a tough day. Keechan right there. And the option pitch. Johnny Ham Jones is pulled out by Scott Zetti. Well, that option stuff's not going to go right now. Notre Dame can just lay those ears back and come. Well, the key to it has been the linebackers have stopped everything on the inside, and the defensive ends, Fry, Zetti, Browner, they just have been keying the wide stuff. Third and 12 now at the 21 yard line. Texas in possession. Notre Dame is leading 38 to 10. We have 8 minutes 54 seconds left to play in the game. Lockett and Jackson far to the right side. That's Campbell again. Look at the Becker. 23. Becker Look. beside himself. Becker and Bob Golick on the tackle. And Earl Campbell, the class man, he got up, patted. I think it was 75. J. Case. He knew. He knows he's in for a long afternoon. They have really keyed on that young man. So it is a fourth down, and Erksleben comes in to punt the ball. Schmitz and Bergmeier have dropped back to field it for Notre Dame. Erksleben with a high trajectory kick again. Bergmeier calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 45, his own 45, first and 10 Notre Dame. So the Fighting Irish start now, leading. I score at 38 to 10, and we have exactly eight minutes remaining to be played in the Cotton Bowl game. The enemy of Texas now is old man time. We have eight minutes remaining to be played in this game. Notre Dame is leading by a score of 38 to 10. Rusty Lish has started warming up his arm behind the Notre Dame bench. He is the backup quarterback, the number two quarterback, Montana. That's quarterback the entire game. That is Vegas Ferguson, or rather Stone. That is the freshman from Seattle. Brad Shearer made the tackle. Jim Stone, the freshman running back from Seattle, in there now for Notre Dame. He picked up two yards to the 47 to make it second down and eight yards to go. You know, as talented as Notre Dame is going into the ball game, the Texas coaching staff did not think that the Irish played with a lot of discipline. But they've sure displayed some discipline today. They are filling those lanes and handling those assignments. David Mitchell's in the ball game for Notre Dame. Had a running back. He was a uh, fullback for much of the season, but then came up with an injury. Weimer in motion across. Fake the stone. Montana's got the ball. McAfee can't hold it. It is an incompletion. It'll be third down and eight yards to go. Let's take a look at Ken McAfee. He very, very seldom drops a pass like this. Montana out of the eye. Little fake. 
Running around to the left side, and you'll see McAfee come into the picture. Right there, he should have had it. He did for a minute, took his eye off of it incomplete. Well, that tight end dragging across the middle has got to be one of the toughest routes in the world to cover. It is third down and eight yards to go for Notre Dame. That is Rusty Lish warming up. He was the starting quarterback for Notre Dame at the start of the season. Mitchell is the up back. Stone is the tailback. Dolman's in motion across for Montana. Montana has the ball. And now he's going long to Chris Haynes. And it's incomplete. A penalty marker's thrown. There is a marker thrown. There is an interference call. There's going to be some dispute on this one. We get the interpretation right here. Possibly offensive interference. Offensive yeah. pass interference. That's lost it down. And this is number 82, Chris Haynes, is running the fly pattern out of play action pass. Montana pulls up here, throws the home run ball. Look at the coverage by Blackwood. Good job by him. Glenn Blackwood. Let's see if we can pick up the hands right. I think it happened about five yards back. Chris Haynes did put his hands on Glenn Blackwood. Offensive pass interference. That's also loss of down. With loss of down, it is fourth down. And the punting unit is coming on now for Notre Dame. Evan Muno doing the punting with Joe Rustic out with an injury. Seven minutes, eight seconds remaining to be played. Johnny Johnson dropping back to field the punt. All right, we haven't seen this guy do his thing yet today. Let's see if we can get him fired up. Speaking of Johnny Johnson, a return man for Texas. Johnson at the 27. And he's well covered by the Notre Dame special teams unit, and it's stopped at the 29-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the Longhorns. They have the ball at their own 29. We have six minutes, 59 seconds left to play in the Cotton Bowl game. First and 10, Texas Longhorns at their own 29. McEachin is seven for 18, 121 yards, three interceptions. McEachin setting up the put it up. Jackson has it at the 35-yard line and back to the 30. And now pulled out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Grunting and a groaning. You hear that pop? <laughs> I did, a gain of a yard on the completion. Who says this cat's not tough? Watch this drag pattern by Alfred Jackson all the way across the middle. McEachin just waits for him to break open. Really an excellent pass this time. And he does take a shot. Look at this ricochet. That's Becker. That's Doug Becker. He knocks him back, and Golick's right there coming in for the cleanup along with Becker. Alfred might have been better off taking a dive. And look all at that. the men on the Notre Dame defense I wouldn't uh, want to uh, meet. Uh, <laughs> look at that. He knows he's number one, right? Campbell at the 28-yard line. And it's Jay Case on the tackle. It'll be third down and 11 yards to go. We have six minutes, 34 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Notre Dame 38 and Texas 10. Well, that's a big uh, part of the story of this ball game, Lindsay. Nobody has stopped Earl Campbell yet as the Notre Dame fans start chanting Goodbye, Texas. We hate to see you go. Penalty marker is thrown. McEachern with a completed pass at the 37-yard line. It was taken there by Gil Harris, the tight end. Marker's being checked out. We have quite offside. That'll make it a third and six. And move it up to the 33-yard line. That's it. Right along there. You know, something that for the most part we've neglected to mention today is the incredible job that Fred Akers has do done in this just his first year at Texas. As you know, he spent uh, nine years in, as an assistant coach at Texas between 66 and 74 yeah. before Offside, taking off the Wyoming. Notre Dame. Brad Akers, it's been a Cinderella story. When he went out to Wyoming to get two years' experience as a head coach, they asked him if he would be leaving soon and uh, would be used as a stepping stone. He said there were only two jobs he'd take if offered, Arkansas and Texas. Texas. Up and back is McEachin. And he's completed it. 
Played to Miguel Harris, the big tight end, who gets up there to the 39. Now, very close to the sticks. He'll take a long look at this one. It was Bobby Leopold on the tackle. Oh, I tell you, these linebackers are really put in the leather. See if we can pick up the pop here. Just around to the tight end, Gil Harris. And watch the hit here coming up. Leroy Leopold, mm. a sophomore from Port Arthur, Texas, really puts a good tackle on Harris. I've seen tamer train wrecks. Leopold had a good season for Notre Dame. When Becker was out with an injury, he came in there as a linebacker. He had three interceptions in the course of the season. Two for touchdowns. First and ten. That's Kago warming up now along the sideline. A freshman who was a heralded All-American quarterback in Cincinnati during his high school days. Paul Brown was quoted as saying he didn't need to go to college. He'd go right from high school to the pros. Undefeated. Never lost a game in high school. McEachern. And it's to Mish complete. At the 43-yard line, another first and ten for the Texas Longhorns. Mike Whittington made the tackle. Little Ronnie Mish. He's a senior, logged very, very little playing time, although he does have two touchdown catches this year. Also missed a couple of games with a broken hand. He's been a squadron, never lettered, but uh, oh, what a root runner he is. He's got exceptional moves, and he's not afraid of anything. It is first down and 10 yards to go now for the Longhorns. Keechern again, and he's got his tight end, Harris, but overthrew him that time. It'll be second and 10 at the 43. Ross Brown and his brothers were heavily recruited by Ohio State because, of course, they live in Warren, Ohio. And uh, Ross Brown has said he wanted to come to Notre Dame because it was an independent. They weren't in a conference, and also they had no athletic dormitory. What uh, what hall did you live in, Paul? <laughs> I lived in a lot of halls. Actually, I know you. I know you. I mean, the athletes around there. I know I mean, Sword, Zom. Never stayed in the same one two consecutive years at their request. <laughs> Second down. Johnny Ham Jones <laughs> at the 39 yard line. Golick and Dyke in to make the tackle for Notre Dame. Be third down and six. Johnny Ham Jones always loses a goose, but you think he's not intense? Uh, he consistently grades out higher than any other Texas offensive player. Very, very rarely blows an assignment. Ross Christians is in there now at the strong safety for Notre Dame in place of Jim Browner. Deachin being chased by Ross Browner, who's got him by the jersey, and that is it. Ken Dyke and Ross Browner. The last three or four minutes. Look at uh, Ham Jones's jersey just ripped off. Browner on the sack that time. In the last uh, four or five minutes, Dan Devine is starting to uh, give his second unit, third unit, some playing time. He's starting to substitute quite freely now. That's McEachern with the torn jersey, and it's a timeout, Texas. Keechin's over to get some new haberdashery. Clock shows four minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the game, and Notre Dame is leading by a score of 38 to 10. McEachin has rushed seven times today for 38 yards for Texas. Minus 38 yards, oh, I beg your pardon, minus. Yes. I thought it was a dash. Well, one thing I can promise you, when this is all over tomorrow in the newspapers and uh, here in the electronic media, these Texas players will give the credit where it deserves, and that's to the Notre Dame Ball Club. They came in here with the job to do, and they did it. Keep in mind now, coming up on January 15th, this is the big one of the NFL, the Super Bowl. And uh, it's going to be the Denver Broncos and the Dallas Cowboys at 6 p.m. Eastern time from the Superdome in New Orleans. Right here on CBS, this promises to be some kind of matchup. The Denver. Super Bowl today from 4.30 Eastern time to 6 p.m., an hour and a half, the Super Bowl today, preceding the Super Bowl game, January 15th on CBS. Fourth down and 14 yards to go. McEachern on fourth down, throws it, and it's complete. Mish has it. Mish has the first down. It's at the 32-yard line. Mish, again, looks more like a choir boy than a receiver. But he's an extremely hard worker, always the first guy out to practice and the last one in. Out route this time. Again, a pretty well-thrown ball by McEachern. Luther Mish is not Bradley. about to run past anybody. I wouldn't run at Luther Bradley either. <laughs> First down and 10 yards to go. Lockett going to uh, slot right, and McEachern didn't have a chance. 
Keechan dropped. It's going to be about the 42-yard line. Scott said he got done. So did Ken Dyke. Man, that ain't no fair fight. Yeah, it's a long day for McEachern. He's had his problems, and uh, a lot of people were guessing. They said if Texas had to throw the ball over 20 times a day, they'd be in trouble. Timeout, Texas. The Longhorns have taken another timeout. And McEachern, again, is coming to the sideline. Well, we've talked about it before, but uh, everybody will be talking about it after the games are over today. Who is number one? Who is the national champion? Had Texas won the ball game, there's no question. They're the only major undefeated, untied team in the country. They would have been declared national champions in all the polls. But now, with a Notre Dame victory seeming assured, 426 remaining, and Notre Dame leading 38 to 10, there will be a host of once defeated teams. Notre Dame will have lost once. They'll claim the national championship. Alabama. And they have a good case for having defeated Texas. Texas will claim the national championship, saying we lost only one game. Alabama will claim the national championship, saying we lost only one game. And whoever wins the Orange Bowl game between Arkansas and Oklahoma will claim the national championship. It'll be decided by the polls, the AP, the UPI, the Football Writers, Football Foundation Hall of Fame. And if you want to, your own personal uh, national championship can be awarded because none of them are official. How about me? My own personal guess what? Who beat Texas? That's all I'm going to think about. Second down and 19 yards to go. McEachin brings them up. McEachin. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Boy, Randy Harrison making a move on it. It is some kind of tough to throw that kind of pattern this late in the game. Defensive backs know exactly what's going on. They take that real deep drop, and uh, <laughs> that's not a very enviable position at all. Paul, let me ask you a question. How long has it been since you've seen a game where Earl Campbell has not broken at least one run over 20 yards? This is obviously the first time this year, and I guess it would date back to... Uh, back last year when he was having the injury problems. Suffice it to say, Notre Dame's done a better job on him than anybody else, easily. Camel carried on that play and stopped at the 40-yard line after a gain of two. Ross Browner made the tackle for Notre Dame. Ross Browner's had a great career at Notre Dame, and he will go high when the draft choices are announced. Nobody wants to win worse than Earl does, but he'll be his old sweet self after the ball game. Give Mom a call. One of 11 children. What a story. Campbell's longest run today has been 18 yards. Clock is running with three minutes, 44 seconds left to play in the game. Going on a fourth and 18 here. Try the reverse play to Campbell. Campbell's got it. Looking for the sticks. But he is going out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Steve Heimkreider made the tackle, so the ball goes over to Notre Dame on downs. About 10 yards short of the first down. Man, even the stuff you draw up in the dirt isn't working today. Well, the Notre Dame defense is just... Really McAfee stopping to there. shake hands with Earl Campbell as he passed him. You saw it there. McAfee, and as Paul Alexander pointed out, McAfee, after the speech at the Heisman Trophy dinner, was not exactly a hero in Texas. Some of his remarks, I think, were a little misinterpreted. I don't think he meant it. No, the way that Texas I don't either. Took it. I don't either. But uh, you saw the handshake there between McAfee and Campbell. Lindsay, if you're a coach of Notre Dame, you wouldn't mind it at all. They were number five. They need a little support. If they did beat Texas, keep everything in mind. Rusty Lish, the quarterback, on the handoff. Rusty Lish in the ball game, handing it off to David Mitchell and the tackle Jefferson and Brad Shearer. Shearer and Jefferson up the See the clock running. 3.15 remaining to be played. It's going to be second down and eight yards to go as the ball is out there at the 35-yard line. Rusty Leish quarterbacking Montana, quarterback Notre Dame for most of the day, had an early injury but stayed in the ball game. Mitchell is the fullback, Stone is the tailback. Schmidt's in motion across. That's Stone, the freshman from Seattle. Got about a yard to the 36-yard line, which will make it third down and seven yards to go. Morgan Copeland came coming over to make the tackle for Texas. It's going to be a very exciting back for Notre Dame in the coming years. He's only a freshman, 6'1", 182 pounds. can really fly. And in fact, he had the longest run from scrimmage for Notre Dame this year, 58 yards. He averaged 6.7 yards a carry every time he touched it. Waymer to the right side. 
Texas is out of timeouts. Westy Leish. Westy Leish to the 40, the 45. Got the first shot at midfield. Lynn no, Blackwood made the tackle. You think Notre Dame's going back to that monastery tonight? I'll tell you. I think they might stay right here in Big D. Two minutes, 38 seconds left. Notre Dame 38 and Texas 10. You know, a lot of people were concerned that Notre Dame had been here in Dallas so long that maybe they lost their edge, but so much for that argument. They had been here almost as long as Paul Hornick. That's right. Quite. <laughs> Seems like my fourth week here. I wonder if they had as much fun as Hornick. I'm sure they did. Rolling is Leish. Going to McAfee. McAfee's got it at the 35-yard line. Another first and ten. Rick Churchman in to make the tackle. McAfee coming across from the left side. Fake the stone. They roll out to the right. Got all the blocking in the world. He could have picked out any receiver there. Everybody was wide open. And here comes Ricky Churchman here, who just hangs on. And they got a little hugging match going on right here. Had Churchman had a tough job. He's had one-on-one -on -one coverage with McAfee all day long. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, somebody says. Clock's not working. It stopped at 210. The clock's not working, somebody says. That means it'll be kept on a watch on the field. Well, Earl Campbell did break one Cotton Bowl record, Lindsay. Most carries. He had 29 carries today for 116 yards. And a number of those coming on a bad leg. Still getting straightened out here about the clock not working with two minutes, 10 seconds. Time will be kept usually We're by the field judge on the field. Right. What was that they were booing? Right here. Coach Devine, the clock is not operating. We're putting it on 205 and it'll be kept on the field. There it is. They're putting it on 205 and then the time will be kept on the field. Clock shows 210. Clock shows 210. Pay no attention to the clock. It is presently inoperative. And uh, so they go to the stopwatch on the field. At least they don't boo Santa Claus okay. here. Okay. Just a second. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to see? Ready? Okay. All right. And the referee tells Rusty Liss it's first down. Is there any way you can shut, shut that, that thing off? Yeah, okay. you shut that thing off? Just shut it off so it's out. He wants to shut the uh, the clock off so it doesn't show anything. He wants to uh, to kill the clock. I imagine Texas would like to turn out the lights on the scoreboard. We're going to see uh, a lot of fans just come on this football field when this game ends. Rusty Leish. Incomplete. Ooh, he had him too. He did. He got to hit Waymer. It'll be second and 10 after 35. Steve McMichael, the defensive tackle for Texas, just leveled Lish. Public address announcer is informing the crowd now that uh, the official time is being kept on the field. Doman is coming in. The clock, of course, uh, in any case, stopped on the incompletion. There is no two minute warning in college football. Doman to the left side. Dickerson to the right. Rusty Lacey rolling. Goes to McAfee, a one-hand stab for McAfee. A one-hand catch and another first down Notre Dame at the 23. Oh, great example of the great hands of Ken McAfee. Here's Lish rolling out to the right. Now watch this one-handed left with his left hand. What a catch. What an athlete. Ken McAfee, his father played at Alabama and then played tight end uh, with the Giants. McAfee had 205 scholarship offers when he finished high school. Waymer, it's incomplete. Blackwood covering defensively. McAfee's had four catches for 46 yards today, second and 10. You know, I wonder how the Texas defense is going to react to all these passes late in the game. Well, Notre Dame pouring it on. Sure is. They're trying to get another touchdown. And, of course, they've got this game completely in hand. But... They're thinking about that number one ranking. Who can blame them? 
38 to 10. 45 points against uh, Texas uh, would look a lot better than 38, I guess. Dolman in motion across. Rusty Leash. And it's incomplete. Intended for Don Knott. Not the intended receiver, number 21. It'll be third and 10 at the 23-yard line. You know, Paul, looking back on the ball game, obviously the turnovers played a big part, but don't you think that a lot of it has been the fact that there really has been a physical mismatch up front. Notre Dame has yep. controlled the line of scrimmage both ways. Well, they're coming into this ball game. We talked about uh, Notre Dame being bigger, a little bit stronger up front, and Texas had to counter with its quickness, and it just wasn't a match today. Not still in the ball game. The tailback, Rusty Leash. To Weimer, inside the 15-yard line. Marked at about the 14. And Blackwood on the stop. Short of first down yardage. Rusty Lish, number two quarterback for Notre Dame, rolls out to his left. He sets up. He's got Dave Waymer out to the left side. Here comes Glenn Blackwood up. Just man-to-man -man coverage out there. It'll be fourth down and a yard to go. And that is Merv Johnson, the assistant head coach. What a job he's done with that offense. George Kelly in the defense, Joe Yano, Jimmy Johnson. An 80-yard, Rusty Lish got it. It's first and 10. Ball is at the 12-yard line. I don't know how much time remains because it's being kept with the stopwatch on the field. You don't hear very much about Notre Dame's wide receivers, but Dave Waymer's had an excellent day. He sure has. He's only a sophomore. In fact, the whole offensive backfield and the receivers, except Ken McAfee, will return next year. Lish has the ball. And he guns it complete inside the five-yard line. Palace. It's in there, and that is Palace with the football, number 45. It's going to be right into the inbounds marker and spotted now. Less than a minute remaining. The crowd has started to move down to the sidelines, and we'll have a rush of people Dame. coming onto this field. Timeout. Notre Dame to stop the... Or rather, the game is over. The game is over. The game is over. We'll return to the Cotton Bowl after this word from your local station. Well, the Cotton Bowl game is history. Time ran out. Notre Dame had the ball inside the five-yard line at about the three when time had run out, but Notre Dame won it by a score of 38 to 10 and a big upset victory as you look at the tunnel leading up to both dressing rooms. Texas and Notre Dame mingling as they head for the locker rooms up the tunnel. Notre Dame has defeated Texas, the only defeat of the year for the Texas Longhorns. Notre Dame, of course, will lay claim to the national championship. It was an afternoon of football thrills, but Notre Dame early in the ball game. Established itself with getting a field goal to put them out front three nothing. Texas came back and tied it three three. From there, Notre Dame moved on, and the one big factor that was so obvious all day long was that the thing that killed Texas were the turnovers. They turned the ball over. Notre Dame alertly took advantage of it and won the football game. Lizzie, the first four turnovers in the first half. Notre Dame got four turnovers. They put three touchdowns on the board and a field goal, and that really. Uh, started the ball rolling for the Irish and they never looked back and they just convincingly a 28 point victory here today and I'm telling you look at them they're happy going into that locker room and Dan Devine couldn't be happier either because I'm sure that he feels that Notre Dame should be number one there's Montana fine quarterback did an outstanding job I tell you the, you know Paul Alexander brought up I think the point that really uh, made the difference up front Notre Dame was just too strong both offensively and defensively Dave Huffman the center Ted Horansky and Ernie Hughes the two guards Tim Foley and Steve McDaniels and Ken McAfee were just a little bit too strong up front blocking and then of course the front four and the linebackers for Notre Dame were just fantastic and I don't even remember Luther Bradley Restick or Brown or Bergmeyer making a tackle 
They didn't have to because Browner, Dyke, Calhoun, Fry, and the linebackers took care of the running game. You know, Paul, I think the coup de grace in the ball game came right after halftime. As you recall, Texas had closed to within 14 points right before the half. And Notre Dame uh, just took that second half, half kickoff and really established control of the line of scrimmage. And they did it on the ground, which is something of a surprise because Texas really did not feel that Notre Dame would be able to run the ball on them that effectively. They only picked up two first downs in the second half, uh, unofficially, Texas. And uh, they had 12 first downs in the first half. So let's go down now to Don Crickey and Coach Dan Devine. All right, Lindsay, here is uh, the coach of Notre Dame, a man who's been under much fire this year, particularly after the team lost to Mississippi. Now uh, di directs his team to what might be one of the great victories in the history of this university. And there's no question about that. Dan, it must be a great feeling. Well, we have a great group of people. Let's go, let's go. And there's old Joe Rustic's mom right down there. She's, <laughs> she's a coach's wife. She knows how I feel. Uh, it's been a great privilege for me to work uh, with this fine group of young people. They're the ones that did the playing, Don. And, They've stayed uh, in shape all year. They've gotten themselves ready. They've done what the coaches have asked them to do. And I'm very, very happy for them and for the University of Notre Dame. What about stopping Texas' highly potent offense, Coach Devine? Uh, really, the great back Earl Campbell wasn't a factor in the game. Defense is 98% uh, emotion and 2% uh, the other ingredients, if you're, as long as you're sound. And we play a sound defense, a team defense, and the emotion was there, Don. How about you personally now? You've been under a great deal of pressure. It's a very difficult job. They call Notre Dame a national university, and certainly uh, if you don't win every game, any coach that's ever been there has been under a lot of pressure. You've probably experienced as much as any coach has been there. Uh, what is your attitude now towards the, the job at Notre Dame? You haven't committed yourself as to whether you'd come back. Uh, you said you'd wait till after this game. How do you feel about continuing at Notre Dame? I've just committed myself. <laughs> I feel great. I've never been in better health. And I have a great group of kids coming back. We lose some good sophomores, and uh, I mean, we lose some good seniors, but we have some good freshmen and sophomores and juniors coming back, and uh, we're going to be out there in the opening ball game wearing green shirts. I'll be there right along with them. Great. All right, Dan Devine. Uh, the game overall today was one uh, of really marked contrast to what the, the forecasters, the wizards that they might not be, uh, predicted they thought that uh, Texas would control the football with its good running game that their quickness on defense would shut down the Notre Dame offense but really uh, your team dominated every single aspect uh, do you think you're going to lay claim now to the national championship I honestly sincerely believe that we deserve it that we earned it on the field and that we should have it and I'd like to I'd like to get in with my squad Don and I think you can understand that being a former athlete you know I'm anxious to get in right. here well Dan we're going to come in there and join you in the dressing room I know you want to get in there with him congratulations again well thank you very much and congratulations to all the players and uh, all Notre Dame people all over the world who I know today is a very happy one for them coach Dan Devine will be getting back to the coach and some of his players uh, in a little bit as they go into the locker room now let's go back up now to Lindsey Nelson all right, Don Crickey, those are Notre Dame fans on the field. The Notre Dame band has been out there. They just spelled out an ND and went to the far sideline. Notre Dame won it 38 to 10.